new season is upon us in Colorado Springs. After an impressive run of the regular season, the Switchbacks played their way to the number three seed of the Western Conference playoffs. Tonight, the postseason begins playing host to the Sounders, too. Hello, everybody. Josh Howe alongside Roland Vargas. And Roland, what an inaugural season for the Switchbacks, but they are certainly not satisfied with what they accomplished in the regular season. Looking for more here in the postseason, and what a matchup against the Sounders, too. And if the regular season is any indication, this is going to be a great match here tonight. It is, and a very difficult matchup for the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. They played the Sounders FC2 twice this season, a draw, and a loss for the Colorado Springs Switchbacks, so it's time for the Switchbacks to right that ship, get the win here tonight. Well, one of the reasons the Switchbacks are hosting a playoff game, the play of the captain, Luke Vercoloni, 14 goals, 9 assists. As Vercoloni goes, so has gone the Switchbacks team. Indeed, he's the captain of the Switchbacks team. He's a very quiet leader on the field, but he leads by example. He's been scoring goals. He's been doing his defensive work. Vercoloni's been one of the most out outstanding players in the USL this season. Well, the Sounders, too, an impressive roster, impressive coaching staff, and and certainly they've got a ton of talent. One of the concerns coming in for the switchbacks tonight, just that ability, that explosion up front, that's certainly one of the tasks tonight, and they've got one of the best in the league. Indeed, Olex Anderson, who you're talking about, he's going to be starting, we think, for the Seattle Sounders FC2. It's from the same country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as their coach, Ezra Hendrickson. He's a very good player. He's a mobile player. He, he's going to look to get in behind the, the switchbacks. The Seattle Sounders FC2 are going to try to play balls over the top into, into him. It's going to be difficult for, for, to defend uh, Anderson tonight. You know, Steve Trichu in this mindset of the switchbacks team, one that, you know, they were satisfied what they did, but they're not happy. And certainly the mindset, you can tell this is a focused team, and certainly they're looking to turn the page. And really, everybody obviously zero and zero. Uh, they've got a playoff mindset coming into tonight. They do, and they basically hosted a playoff game here last week. They really wanted that first round bye. They were unable to get the bye. It was a bit of a disappointment for the switchbacks and head coach Steve Trichu. Luckily, I was able to meet up with Coach Trichu just before the game and he was able to give me some thoughts on tonight's matchup. Coach, the playoffs are finally here. How excited are you for this matchup against the Sounders too? Yeah, I think we're ready. We had a good week of training, you know, and we, we know Seattle well. And so, you know, they really probably don't have a whole lot of surprises tonight. So we got to come out, play our game. And I told the guys, you know, believe in what we're doing, believe in what we've done so far. And I think we'll have a good game tonight. Home, home crowd is going to be huge for you. How much does it mean to be able to play here in front of your home support? Yeah, beautiful night tonight. You can't, you can't ask for anything better and, and hopefully we'll We'll sell this plays out and have a good crowd, and you know they'll they'll help us on to victory. You played twice against Seattle this year, haven't been able to beat them. You expecting any surprises from the Sounders too tonight? No, I think they're pretty. Uh, we we know what they're going to do, and so you know they've got some very talented forwards, uh, good solid defense. So you know we've got to be on top of our game, and we've got to take it to the next level. But I think the guys are ready tonight. Coach, thank you so much. Good luck tonight. All right, thanks. Postseason soccer, it's coming up next. The starting lineup and the kickoff when we return. Whole Foods Market, values matter. So all of the fresh beef we sell comes from cattle who've had room to roam. No antibiotics, no added hormones. Third party rated for animal welfare, raised by people with responsible ranching practices on over 1,000 U.S. ranches, like Hearst Ranch. Because to us, value is inseparable from values. Whole Foods Market, America's healthiest grocery store. Just start for this quarterfinal matchup here tonight at Sand Creek Stadium. The starting lineup for the Switchbacks. Starting tonight for your Switchbacks. Number one, Davida Gorick. 
Number 25, Jordan Burns. Number two, Josh Phillips. Number 34, J.J. Greer. Number seven, Nate Robinson. Number 21, Shintaro Harada. Number four, the captain, Luke Vercaloni. Number 12, Mike Sack. Number 10, Miguel Gonzalez. Number 11, Saeed Robinson. Number 15, Chandler Hoffman. An electric atmosphere here at Sand Creek Stadium as we get set to kick it off. The switchbacks, the Sounders to the switchbacks. Well, going with a familiar starting 11, David Agorg certainly has been the anchor between the posts. He has, and they have Jordan Bird, Josh Phillips right in front of him there. Have that center back partnership. Fantastic. Sounders, too. So much talent up and down this lineup, but certainly one of the best in Sergio Moto. Also look out for Aaron Kovar. Very dangerous player. He's been up and down with the Sounders in MLS this season. Can get a lot done. They're going to be looking for Alex uh, Olex Anderson, excuse me, over the top. Fans are a military family tonight. Sergeant Nate O'Donnell and his wife. He is a tech sergeant in the 10th Medical Group at the Mental Health Clinic, working as an alcohol and drug counselor. We thank him for his service to our community and our country. The officials tonight, Rosendale Mendoza, Jennifer Garter, Francisco Bermudez and Eddie Tuggle rounding out the officiating crew tonight. The weather, your associates in dental care weather forecast, absolutely spectacular. What a night for this quarterfinal playoff matchup here in Colorado Springs. You cannot ask for better conditions here on September the 25th. Well, what a night. And you can see there the visitors, the Sounders, too, in the road white and black numbers, the switchbacks. In the home black-white numbers, we are underway. The switchbacks attacking from right to left. The Sounders, too, from left to right. This is a Seattle team that hit a slump towards the end of the regular season. They got a big win over Austin to round out the regular season. That got them in the playoffs. And here they are, the number six seed, taking on the third-seeded switchbacks. As you said, they'd lost four in a row going into that must-win game against Austin, but they got it done against Austin. They're here in the playoffs. Obviously, they would have liked to host a playoff game up there in Tukwila, Washington, Starfire Stadium. But they're here in Colorado Springs. They're excited to be here. There's a lot of energy around this Sounders FC2 team. So looking forward to a really good matchup tonight. Well, one of the few teams to pick up a result here at Sand Creek Stadium. Back on July the 18th, these two teams played here at Sand Creek Stadium as Vercadotti heads over now. Seth takes it away. And a good clear there by Seth across midfield. And here's Gonzalez on the run, just a little too far out in front. We talk about the success of the Sounders is Steve Trichy leading the way for the switchbacks. What a job he has done. 14 wins, 10 losses, and four draws. And the Sounders, well, a legendary coach in Ezra Hendrickson. Three MLS championship teams he played for, and he guides this Sounders two team also in their inaugural season here in USL play. As you said, he played 12 years in the MLS. He played for Ziggy Schmidt a couple times, who's now obviously the head coach of the Seattle Sounders and uh, who wears a scarf better than almost any coach I know, Ziggy Schmidt. Uh, Ezra, Ezra Hendrickson was a very fine player in his day, and he's done really good things down here. I, I don't think he looks as, at this job as a stepping stone job. I think he's really invested in this job here with the Seattle Sounders FC2. They've got a great organization up in Seattle. We know that uh, every time my uh, European friends try to make fun of American soccer, I just show them the Sounders fans, and uh, that quiets them up pretty well. Here's Saeed Robinson. Up in the front off to Miguel Gonzalez, quarter of the 18. Gonzalez, a little bit of room left side. The cross in front of the goal box. Scott high up in the air. And Seattle in good position to clear it out. Chandler Hoffman was there lurking. Mike Seth right behind him, right on top of the six-yard box there. Well, Rowland, certainly uh, the fans here at Sand Creek Stadium. We got the uh, Back Chat podcast. We just wanted to give a shout out to them. They're the official podcast for the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. My friends, Paul, they do a really good job. 
uh, they know what they're doing. They get some players. They got some coaches. They got great interviews. They're going to be hosting a party uh, next week. So the uh, everybody check out the uh, Back Chat podcast on Twitter. Uh, they do a very fine job. Mark and Paul, really good guys, and they do a really good job here supporting the team and uh, getting awareness for the switchbacks out in the community. Well, the social media has been phenomenal, not only for the switchbacks, but obviously for the USL. A great job to market a fantastic product growing here in the States and, of course, around the globe. It's exciting to see just what's on the horizon in 2016 and beyond. Here we are kicking off the playoffs here, though, in 2015. And what a matchup. Three versus six, the switchbacks playing host to the Sounders, too. And the Sounders, too, we talked about that draw they picked up back on July the 18th. Just one of two teams to earn a draw this season at Sand Creek Stadium. So they obviously have confidence coming in here despite the fact they're playing at over 6,500 feet. Shintaro Harada on the ball here, and what a plus it is for the switchbacks to have Shintaro Harada back as Chandler Hoffman gets free. Well defended there by Seattle. First corner kick of the night for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Looks like Nate Robinson's going to come up from left back to take this one. Shawnee Fairclough on the defensive side for the Sounders, too. You got Fairclough, Low, Oxford, and Correa on that back end for the Sounders, too. So quarter kick near side here for the switchbacks. First of the game, 118 quarters of the regular season. And here they go to start things off here in the fourth minute. As usual, watch out for J.J. Greer, Josh Phillips. Right-footed strike, Ben in, headed out of there by Seattle. Big hop to Shin Harada, and well played by Seattle. We got a whistle. Well played there by Shintaro Harada. Just got his body in front of the player there. Just screened off the player there. That was number 39, uh, Olex Anderson. He just screened him off, won the ball there, Shintaro Harada. That's a good call by the referee. He's right on top of it. See here, Shintaro Harada. He plays the bounce. He screens off the player. A little bit of the hands to the face. Referee's right on top of that. On the counter now, Seattle. Here the switch back in, and... Switchbacks are going to dump it back to David Agoric, and he'll clear it across the midfield stripe. Well, how about the play of the keeper? We mentioned a little bit here in the starting lineup of David Agoric. Nine shutouts this season, one of the best in the USL in that department. 12 wins, a couple of draws, but you talk about confidence. That defensive line have been so good, they have protected him, but Gore has been still on the cross now for Seattle. It gets through. And Seattle now working in the box, poked out of there by Myseth. So great defensive play on the back end by Seth. And the switchbacks able to control near midfield. Darwin Jones found himself in a lot of space, but look at the turnover. It's created now with Miguel Gonzalez. That's a foul for sure. Gonzalez on the run, and we got a card coming out here. That's a bit unlucky. It's very early in this game, but uh, maybe a fair yellow card. That's Fairclough getting the yellow card there. Ashani Fairclough. Uh, Miguel Gonzalez breaking well down the left-hand side as he's done all season. Knows the players behind him. Cuts in front of him. Fairclough just sticks out a foot, takes out his ankle. Referee on top of that one. Yellow card to Fairclough. It's going to be so, have to be very careful here for the remainder of this game. That's a very early time to pick up a yellow card. So Fairclough, one of the anchors on that defensive unit for the Sounders, too. So he picks up the yellow here in the sixth minute. And on the free kick, Nate Robinson. He got set to his right. He'll trot in near the top of the box. And both center backs again are forward. J.J. Greer, Josh Phillips. The uh, Seattle Sounders FC2 really missing Nick Miele in there tonight. Defender, very tall, rangy defender, can play a pass. Was excellent in both games against the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Um, so uh, he's on the bench, obviously, here tonight. Thank you, Josh. But uh, it's difficult to not have him in the starting lineup, especially from these set pieces. Robinson of the free kick in the header. Sails over the crossbar. Mike Seth using that good size and vertical leap to get the shot. Mike Seth, very deceptive in the air. We've talked about it all this season. Finds himself just on the outside of the uh, penalty box, or excuse me, the six-yard box, unable to get that one on the box. Just too high there for Mike Seth. Fans, a reminder, all USL playoff matches are available live, free, and in HD on YouTube. Follow all the action on the USL YouTube channel to watch the crowding of the 2015 USL champion. Quarter final match here. Three seed versus six seed. The switchbacks playing host to the Sounders, too. The switchbacks looking for a little payback. They have yet to knock off the Sounders this season. 0 oh, 1 1, their record. The switchbacks had appeared in their opening meeting back on July the 18th. Had victory in their hands. They got that goal from Eric King in the ninth minute, but Sergio Moto picked up one of the 61st minute. The switchbacks had their chances late, not able to come up with the win, so they settled for a point. And 
then on August the 19th, rolling up in Seattle, the switchbacks got off to a good start, had the lead, but three consecutive goals by Seattle, just too much. It was. It was a great performance by the Sounders, too, up there in Star at Starfire uh, Sports Complex. Played at a very strange time. That was a 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time start. Very hot conditions up there in Seattle. Really threw the switchbacks off their game. Obviously, they won't, they won't be making that excuse. I'll make that excuse for them, but uh, fair, fair play to the Sounders FC2. They played very well that night. They deserved that victory, and as you said, they got the three goals. Switchbacks were able to get a late consolation goal, but uh, just wasn't enough for the switchbacks. Off the free kick, Mansure spins around, and the Sounders, too, set it up. Back of their own end. Seattle team again. They were stumbling down the stretch, but got that big win over Austin, and that ball sent in, and David Lagoric there on the doorstep to secure. Good hands there by David Lagoric. We've got to remember, of course, that the uh, Seattle Sounders are doing so well this season. They just won their uh, CONCACAF Champions League game against the Vancouver Whitecaps. The Whitecaps like to think of that as a rivalry between the... Uh, uh, between the uh, Sounders and the, and the Whitecaps, but it's really not. The main rivalry is, of course, between the Timbers and the... Uh, uh, but we can see here we got some watch parties over at the Atlantic Brewing Pub there and also at Odin Brewing Pub. Odin Brewing Pub is in Tukwila. The Atlantic, Cro uh, Atlantic Crossing Brewing Pub is uh, just, just next to Roosevelt High School there. The Rough Riders want to give a shout-out to the Rough Riders. So uh, if anybody wants a shepherd's pie, some, some fish and chips, maybe a Reuben, some Boddington's, please I like feel free it. to do that. Put it on my friend Josh's tab. He's, <laughs> he's on Twitter, at Josh That's Howe. Just send him the bell. At Josh sure. Howe. Okay. Not... Uh, I'm sure that's that, right. I'm sure that'll work out. Uh, might expense account that one, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, we wish everybody watching a uh, happy viewing party. It's just it's great to have. It's great to have these games on the on the uh, YouTube. People able to watch. So it's uh, it's really been great for fans this season. Well, you love the energy in the Northwest. They obviously support soccer like no other region of the country. And certainly uh, watching tonight the Sounders to the inaugural season. You know, well we talked a lot about the inaugural season for the Switchbacks, the success they've had. But how about the Sounders getting in the postseason? Yeah, the Sounders have done well, as you said, in the inaugural season for them as well. And to be able to do this while they're challenging in the MLS, they're doing very well in the MLS. They're sitting fourth right now in the Western Conference. They're in the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Champions League after beating uh, the Vancouver Whitecaps, like I said before. So to be able to have this much depth in their organization, that really speaks well to them. And, uh, of course, to be able to get into the playoffs at the expense of uh, the Portland Timbers, too, who weren't able to get into the USL playoffs, that's got to be even sweeter for those fans in Seattle. Tenth bet, it's still no score. The switchbacks and Sounders, too. And as David Agoric out of the box and plays it back to Josh Phillips. And when well, you talk about fast starts, the switchbacks have been so good at home this season, getting off the hot starts. They've outscored their opponents in the opening half by 11 goals and a plus 18 goal differential overall. But this is a team that really feeds on getting up there on their opponents and putting them away. An impressive nine wins here at Sand Creek Stadium. Definitely, and they're attacking the goal to the left of your screen. That's the goal they found most of their success this season for some reason. There is no difference in the field. We don't have an Easter Road situation in Edinburgh where there's a bit of a bit of a hill on the field. But for some reason, when the switchbacks attack the north end of the field, they've done a lot better. It's going to be interesting to see how the switchbacks play the center of the midfield tonight. Obviously, Ronnie Argetta still struggling a little bit with that knee injury. So to have Shintaro Harada back from his one-game suspension for the accumulation of yellow cards, that's huge for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Um, we've got a really good crowd out here as you see here tonight here at uh, Fortress Sand Creek Stadium as the uh, back chat podcast people like to call it. Really good crowd here in the inaugural season for the uh, Colorado Springs Switchbacks. So the Sounders too to throw it in here near side. That's Fairclough who picked up the yellow card of the sixth minute of play. And a crowd, a great crowd on hand tonight but certainly uh, yet to really get into this match and we're just underway here as we played just over ten and a half minutes, nearly a giveaway on the back end, but Seattle good speed defensively. That's Correa trying to turn the corner. And Saeed Robinson, what a matchup there on the far side and cleared over into the switchbacks in. That was well played again there by Correa with the defensive header. He's a good left back. He likes to get forward, so the switchbacks may try to get in, use the speed of Saeed Robinson to get in behind Correa there on the far hand side. You can see Chandler Hoffman lurking up front there, physical play. Just, uh, just wants Saeed Robinson's jersey, no harm in that. Sounders, too, work into the switchbacks in off the foot of Darwin Jones. He'll try it down the center now. Vercoloni pressuring, and then Shin Harada behind him. This is a good possessing Sounders, two team. You can see the ball control here at midfield. Patience here by Seattle as they dump it back to low. 
I'm, su I'm surprised so far to see Sergio Mata playing so so deep, playing in that uh, defensive holding position for the Sounders FC2. I know obviously he's done that before a couple times this season, but uh, I am a little bit surprised by that. I thought he'd be pushed a little bit for, uh, further forward, especially early on. For Canale, great ball there. Said Robinson off the feet. Now Shin Hirata follows up to the court of the 18th. Seth waited it on the left side, but headed away there by Seattle. And now Gonzalez battling. That'll be or rather Robinson switchback ball. Well played by Nate Robinson. I thought he was the best player on the field in the last game for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Had a bit of an uneven first half. In the second half, he was fantastic, really, really making that left back spot his own. Obviously, with the loss of Clay Bejarano, the loss of Taylor Hunter, switchbacks have really had to change it up at the uh, at the wing back posi uh, position. Excuse me. So uh, Nate Robinson's come in, done a fine job at left back. You can see Shin Harada try to work it up to Mike Seth, but boy, defensively, Seattle's been fantastic. They have. They're very technical behind the ball. They get two banks of four quickly behind the ball. They're a very large team. Just looking here from the, the broadcast booth, they, uh, a lot of their players are towering over the switchbacks players. So the switchbacks definitely have to be cautious of giving up free kicks, corner kicks, set pieces, that kind of thing, because uh, just looking at the Seattle Sounders, too, they're going to be able to hurt the switchbacks. They're a very, very large team, very physical team. Headed up by Mike Seth, played at midfield. Now Vercoloni closes in, and Sounders, too, swing it over to the far side. Side Robinson using that good speed, not able to get there in time. And Vercoloni off the takeaway. Here's Side Robinson up front. The switchbacks work it up. Miguel Gonzalez in the box. Shot and a goal! Miguel Gonzalez and the switchbacks lead it one to nothing. Beautiful goal by Miguel Gonzalez as he jumps across to celebrate with the switchbacks FC staff. That was a fantastic team goal. Chandler Hoffman there keeping the ball, bringing the defenders toward him. Absolutely fantastic play there by Chandler Hoffman as we see here. Look at Miguel Gonzalez coming through, right foot past the goalkeeper, past the defender, into the far side of the net. one nothing. Colorado Springs switchbacks. What a great start for the team. And what a run started by Luke Vercoloni, the captain on the far side. That speed up front, just too much for Seattle. Vercoloni, Hoffman combining really well. Hoffman, the defenders were obviously scared of Chandler Hoffman. They knew what he was capable of. Miguel Gonzalez just floating in behind him, able to run onto that perfectly weighted pass and finish that one to the far side of the net. It's a great finish by Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel Gonzalez nets his 11th goal this season. And what a goal. The first goal of the postseason here in 2015 to the USL. And the switch backs up 1-0. And Roland, we flash back to August the 19th. That game in Seattle in the afternoon game. Gonzalez scored first as well. We'll see how Seattle responds here in their third meeting of the season. That was a very emotional game for Miguel Gonzalez. He was obviously going back home. He attended Seattle University. Also, Josh Phillips on the Colorado Springs switchbacks. He went to uh, Gonzaga up there in the great Pacific Northwest. So a lot of players with some ties there. But that, that was a difficult game, like I said, for the switchbacks. They were unused to that starting time. No excuses for that. The, Se the Sounders played well. Let's see if they can respond the same way they did back at Starfire Stadium in August. Seth flicks it back, and now the Sounders, too, play it near midfield. Off the body of Mansure. Up in front, and there's J.J. Greer. How about that defensive? The center backs for the switchbacks. You got Greer and Phillips. Tough to get any kind of penetration against them. And now Greer retreats, and another good play to stop that potential run by the Sounders, too. Switchbacks just want to put their foot on top of the ball here, take a little bit of the pressure off, just let this goal sink in against Seattle. Just take some time here, run down the clock just a little bit. It's not really for the clock. It's just try to get the, the ball, the possession in their, in their half. They're comfortable on the ball. Seattle's not pressing too high. The switchbacks just want to hold this lead. Just the, the very familiar scene was from the Colorado Springs switchbacks, getting that early goal, really knowing how to close down the field and really knowing how to see out you know, the end of halves. And roll most likely the switchbacks would not point this out, but you look back at the end of the, the way the regular season ended, that one nothing loss against the Galaxy. It seemed like they could not generate, obviously, any kind of offense. They get shut out, but it just did not go their way. So to get a goal early on, confidence-wise, that has got to be huge for this team. It does. It's going to give the team a boost. It's going to give the crowd a boost. Both uh, the, uh, the team and the crowd were just a little bit flat there against Los Angeles, but that's all down to the Galaxy, too. They played really well. Uh, the switchbacks, I, I talked to head coach Steve Trichard during the week and he said that maybe it was a bit of a positive not having that bye week being able to keep the legs going being able to stay fresh obviously bringing Shintaro Harada back from his suspension that's huge for the switchbacks but uh, Steve, head coach Steve Trichy was very bullish on his team's chances he really thought it was a good thing to have that to uh, actually not have that bye week so uh, we'll see obviously we'll see at the end of the 90 minutes but uh, the Sounders uh, just haven't been able to keep too much possession well yet the uh, center of the midfield for the Colorado Springs switchbacks has been rotating over well keeping Seattle off the ball. 
So throwing near side here by the Sounders too, and they'll get it back to their keeper, Charlie Line. Line this season coming into the playoffs, a 1.71 goals against average, 9, 10, and 2. And four shutouts, but obviously giving up the goal here. A beautiful goal by Miguel Gonzalez coming in the 14th minute. That the difference in the game. Saeed Robinson controlling with the right foot, and Saeed some good ball work on the far side, and now cleared out on the far side by the Sounders. Obviously, Saeed Robinson coming into the lineup tonight at the expense of Charles Elowendu. He was on loan uh, to the switchbacks from the uh, uh, Major League Soccer's Colorado Rapids, but unfortunately just wasn't registered in time just a couple days too late, so he misses out on being able to be involved here in the uh, postseason for the switchbacks. But to have Robinson, to have that speed of Saeed Robinson on the far side to be able to bring him in, that's a great luxury for head coach Steve Fitcher. Elowendu so explosive, but Saeed, he was great early on, then battled through some mid-season injuries, but it appears to be in nearly 100% in terms of his form here in the postseason. He had a niggling little injury that just wouldn't seem to go away. He would come back, uh, come off the bench as a substitute, seem to tweak tweak that injury again, but it's nice to have Saeed Robinson back, and again, the uh, play of Nate Robinson here on this near side has been fantastic as well, so seeing both Robinsons out there, uh, not related, obviously, but uh, seeing both Robinsons out there, Nate and Saeed, fantastic for the switchbacks, and uh, Saeed, a really happy guy, talked to him in the week, very proud Jamaican, very proud to be on the field, and uh, he, he was sad at the loss of Charles Elowendu as well. Um, but uh, the opportunity that's befallen to him to be able to come off the bench, really happy for Saeed Robinson. Oh, nasty little nutmeg there by Mata. Wow. A little bit of trickeration there right through Shintaro Harada's legs. Harada was left with no choice but to bring down Mata there. So free kick here for Mota. And fans, a reminder, you can follow at USO on Twitter to keep up with all the live action during the 2015 at USL playoffs. Here's this little nutmeg, have some of that. Shintaro Harada just pulls his jersey a little bit. Referee, again, right on top of the spot. Good call. Moda has been sensational this season. Four goals, four, four assists, but he is a game-changing type of player. He is. He's scored in the previous two meetings between these two teams. Long ball in. Gork punches the ball high up in the air, top of the box now. Switchback's got a break on here if they can go quickly. Miguel Gonzalez across midfield. Up ahead, he's got Saeed Robinson strutting near side and hustling back to Sounders, too, able to clear it out and lying off the right foot, sails out of the near side, and Gonzalez will play it in. What a great uh, break there by the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Moda floated that ball in. Dave Lagora came two fists, punched that one. Said Robinson just unable to get on the end of that one. Unlucky for Said Robinson. That was Correa there over defending the uh, left back, finding himself out of position, but uh, did a good job there uh, scraping up and uh, getting the ball back to line as goalkeeper. Well done by the uh, Sounders, too. So Nate Robinson will back it up here on the throw for the switchbacks. 20th minute, what I think Colorado Springs out in front. Miguel Gonzalez gets his 11th goal of the season, first of the postseason. And a switch backs with the early lead. Good cross, and now cleared out of there by Seattle Shin Harada well for the back end. Now both these teams have had bursts, but early on give the nod to the switchbacks. They have control for the majority of time here in the early going. And Phillips didn't like the call. Talker to the official here near side. And well, you love the energy, the tenacity that the young man from Gonzaga plays with. He played the bounce. He won the ball in the second, but he uh, had his hand wrapped around the jersey there of uh, Oleks Anderson. And uh, Oleks Anderson, uh, the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2 are going to be looking for him over the top. He's become a little bit more isolated as this first half goes on. But as we see right there, right on cue, uh, they're going to be looking for uh, Oleks Anderson over the top, try to get behind Greer, behind Phillips, try to stretch the switchbacks defense as we see Saeed Robinson doing the exact opposite to the Sounders too. Saeed with that great speed working out of the right side. Inside near the end line, it sails out. Last touch by corner. Seattle. So quarter coming up here for the switchbacks, their second quarter of the night. A Whole Foods quarter kick coming up here in the 21st minute. Now you can see just how electric Saeed is and the task ahead for that back line of Seattle. Saeed Robinson, he's got the speed, he's got the confidence, he's been doing really well in training. Saw him score a couple of screamers in training, actually, on uh, Samir Bader, the, back, the reserve goalkeeper. Must have been at least 35-plus yards out. So Saeed Robinson, full of confidence, full of happiness. He's really playing with a great joy and a great speed so far here tonight. Nate Robinson, Whole Foods corner kick, hit it up!
They might not, though. I think the referee's going to be calling this one back. The assistant referee on the far side there, she had her flag up early. She's going to be calling this one back. The referee's coming over to have a little chat. Let's see what let's see what happens here. Luke Vercoloni, the captain, is the only one allowed to be over there having a talk. Looked like a clean goal to me. Looked like it went through the defender on the line, but look, we're going to see on the replay here. Obviously having a bit of a conference here, but I believe... The it is a goal it, for the Colorado. It is. It is. I believe that was J.J. Greer that got that, that got that goal. I'm not sure what that conference was about, but, hey, as long as the referees talk to each other, as long as the referees get it right, that's fine. That was J.J. Greer, magnificent Rear. leap. Ah, I see. Saeed Robinson was in the goal. Saeed Robinson was on the goal line. That's what the discussion was about. Was Saeed Robinson offside? But on the goal line, the Seattle Sounders FC2 had two players on the goal line. Saeed, Ro Saeed Robinson could not be offside, even though he did interfere with interfere with play. That's a clean goal. It's going to go down to J.J. Greer's goal. 2-0 Colorado Springs switchbacks, 22 minutes. And right through the legs of Mansouri, he was in good position. And how about J.J. Greer contributed in so many ways to the defensive end. And here on this set piece for Cololi, well, no need to worry now. It's a goal. Two to nothing. The switchbacks. J.J. Greer comes up big here in this quarterfinal matchup. We called his name earlier from the set pieces. We said, watch out for J.J. Greer. Watch out for Josh Phillips. They can win balls anytime in the air, any day against any kind of defender. That was a fantastic win by J.J. J. by J.J. Greer. Excuse me. As the switchbacks look to win the ball back here, but obviously some controversy with that goal. With Saeed Robinson standing on the line, inter interfering with the defender. There's going to be some unhappy people in Seattle right now, but I. I think that was a clean goal. Mercadotti flicks it up. As we see here on the replay, Saeed Robinson there in the corner of the goal. He's not off. He, he doesn't touch the ball, number one. And number two, he's not offside because Correa's foot is on the line. The defender there on the far side of the post, he's on the line. So Saeed Robinson can be in the goal for all he wants to be. But once that defender's on the line, he cannot be offside. So that's a clean call by the officials. It was great for them to talk to each other, get that call right, despite the protestations of Luke Vercoloni. The, the, uh, Sa the uh, Sounders FC2 staff not very happy with that one. But I think when they see the replay, they'll understand what, 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 uh, what went on. And major props to our camera crew, guys in the truck. Great job. Great job. Good luck at that second. Second goal by the switchbacks. J.J. Greer gets it off the quarter kick from Nate Robinson. Two to nothing switchbacks and a shocking start to this quarterfinal matchup. The Sounders, too, a very good team. 13 wins coming in. They earned a draw with the switchbacks back on July 18th, but this game has an entirely different feel. It does. Sergio, uh, Sergio Mata there, not exactly thrilled with the call going against him, kicking the ball away. Could have picked up a yellow card there for descent, but I think it's good refereeing just having a talk with the young Brazilian, calming him down, getting the switchbacks to restart play here. Well, the switchbacks had that great run at home early and towards the mid part of the season. One of the reasons why they got up early on their opponents, able to put them away, this feels more like this that type of switchbacks team. It does, and we talked again about the switchbacks attacking this goal to the north end, how, how successful it's been for the Colorado Springs switchbacks to be able to go right to left as you're looking on your camera screen, and once again it shows here in the first half. So Charlie Lyon in a hole. The Sounders two trailing, two to nothing. Goals by Miguel Gonzalez, that in the 14th minute. And then J.J. Greer heads in a corner kick off the quarter ball by Nate Robinson in the 22nd minute. And two to nothing, the switchbacks leading this quarterfinal playoff matchup here. 25th minute into the quarter now. Seattle, a rare opportunity in the switch back in. They'll move it along the end line and not able to keep his feet moving in quickly. Whoa, there whoa, was whoa, Darwin whoa. Jones. Whoa, he's called, the referee's called a penalty kick, but the assistant referee made no call, and it was outside the box. The, the, the referee's got to go talk to his assistant the way that he did in the first time here. The, the head referee has, call, has called a penalty kick, even though it was A, outside the box, and B, not a foul. The, assist, the assistant referee, as we can see here, is standing right on top of the play. Not a foul, outside the box. And the referees called a penalty kick, even though the assistant who's standing right in front of him had his flag down the entire time. The referees have got to get together and talk about this one, just like they did on the far side for the uh, second switchbacks goal. Now, this is a pivotal decision here. Clearly, as Roland pointed out, outside the penalty box. But should this call stand, this game, the momentum could change in a hurry. Steve Trichu clearly wants these officials to discuss it. And now it looks like it may be overturned. Looks like it is overturned. I'm not sure. The referee is calling the foul, but he's calling it just outside the box. Ezra Hendrickson not exactly thrilled, wearing the scarf, Ziggy Schmidt style. And Hendrickson clearly not happy with that call. That was a game-altering 
type of play in terms of momentum. It's been all switchbacks, but instead they will have to settle for a free kick. No penalty kick, free kick here, 27th minute. Just outside the box here. Seattle's brought their center backs forward. Da dangerous position, but obviously the uh, switchbacks will take this as opposed to a penalty any day of the week. And Kobar, midfielder on the right side of the box to take the free kick. Again, Miguel Gonzalez, Luke Bercononi away out of the doorstep of the goal box. And you got Gork in goal, the cross headed up. Get guess, out of there. Guess who? Josh Phillips, one of the best defenders in the USL, wins almost everything in the air, is right on top of the six-yard box. That one right on top of his goalkeeper, able to clear that one out for a throw-in. Well defended there by Josh Phillips. Well, and no matter what side it's on, you're glad the officials got the calls right. So far, they have done just that. You'll watch a lot of games where the the, the head referee and his assistants won't, won't discuss anything. We've been the last five minutes. We've had two long discussions between the referee and his assistants, and you do like to get the call right no matter how long it takes, no matter what happens. Just get the call right in the end. The referee uh, seemed to have done that on both occasions uh, with the goal, the second goal for the switchbacks, and obviously that free kick there for the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2. So fair, fair play to the referee so far. First real shot of the night comes off the the foot of Oleg Anderson sailing over the crossbar. So opportunities have been limited for Seattle and credit the pressure that Colorado Springs has played with here tonight. They have really put pressure up front tonight and uh, so far resulting in two goals. You get the goal off Miguel Gonzalez and then a quarter opportunity. They cash in, J.J. Greer heads it in. Two to nothing is where we stand here in the 28th minute. The switchbacks will control far side. A lot, of a lot of substitutes getting warm on the uh, bench there for the Seattle Sounders FC2. I can see Pablo Rossi going through his paces. We know Ezra, Hend Ezra Hendrickson, excuse me, is not going to be happy with this result so far, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the young Argentine uh, Pablo Rossi get into this game, maybe even at the start of the second half. Thrown by Hoffman, and Mercadonio waits there. Seattle able to play it. Jordan Burt now, side bump, loses the ball, and here we go. Seattle, an opportunity here on the counter. Midfield, good speed. Moda, right side, and now they'll play it near side of Darwin Jones. Working on the angle there, and Moda bends it in. The header punched out of there by David Agoric. Brave goalkeeping there by David Agoric. He took a shot in the ribs after that one, but he came out, got two strong fists to it. Well done. Now Chandler Hoffman's going to get on the end of this one. Nope, he isn't. Good defending there by the Seattle Sounders FC2. Well done there. That's Damian Lowe getting back defensively. A lot to like about the Seattle lineup and that ball sailing out of the stands. And David Agoric, he has been sensational here tonight. Fans, a reminder, Nike is a proud partner of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. Able to Gork and Josh Phillips setting it up here in the back end. In control up 2 to nothing here. 30th minute oh, this dear. quarterfinal match giveaway now. It's Mansure up ahead. Phillips ricochets off his right foot. Sloppy pass there by Shintaro Harada. He's apologizing to his teammates. Can't give the ball away there right on top of your back four. Shintaro Harada knows that. He's a better player than that. And here he is again on the ball. He's giving that one away as well. Difficult little stretch here for Shintaro Harada. Anderson working it back to Moda. Moda with the left foot shot. It ricochets off Harada through the end line. But this will be a quarter kick here for Seattle in the 30th minute. It's going to be a Heineken corner kick on the far side of the field for the Sounders FC2. Moda again playing deeper than we've seen him, but he's starting to starting to filter, starting to find his way forward a little bit more here as the first half progresses, obviously with those two goals going in for the switchbacks. But uh, the Seattle Sounders FC2 have the uh, Heineken corner kick here on the far side of the field. So Seattle takes their first That's quarter kick of the night. Kovar to take it. Bends it in and headed out of there by the switchbacks. Yes, Gonzalez who? waits, and here comes Miguel. He's got room sight in front of him and try to get midfield. A good defensive work by Aaron Long. Very good tackle there by Aaron Long, but that was Josh Phillips winning that ball again in the air. That's a brilliant ball in right in between the defense and the goalkeeper there. Bouncer. Great, great ball in there by the Seattle Sounders FC2, but uh, uh, decently saved there in the end by uh, David LaGore. But that was a fantastic cross there. Was that Long? That was. That was Aaron Long. That's a brilliant ball in there with his right foot. Could have been a bit of a tug on the back of the shirt there. Definitely looking for it were the uh, the Sounders, but the referee was right on top of the spot and didn't, didn't blow the whistle. Long, of course, the older brother of Alexis Long, the captain of Colorado College, the women's soccer team here. A, a very good soccer team. Obviously one of the best west of the Mississippi and the Mountain West Conference there on the road this week. 
playing in Nevada, so not an opportunity to see your older brother play, but soccer connections playing out here in Colorado Springs. So 32nd minute, David Agoric. A shot of water is his team. It's given him a little bit of cushion to work with on a great night. Great turnout here the in this quarterfinal matchup. Those are the trailheads there, the official supporters group of the uh, Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. You see all the flags behind them of all the players representing the Switchbacks. Trailheads there and fine boys earlier in this game uh, making really making Fortress Sand Creek their own. It's a nice supporters group to have. And it's really great to see soccer grow here as you see Steve Trichu with the usual hands on hips. Got to be pleased with he this does. start here tonight. He Certainly. Does. This team has responded after a bit of a stumble to wrap up the regular season. So the winner of this one will meet the number two seed, Oklahoma City, in the second round of the USL Western Conference playoffs. That one will shake out on October the 4th, a Sunday night in Oklahoma. A lot of time left to go here, though. The switchbacks off to a great start up, two to nothing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's Gonzalez with Fairclough. And Fairclough, of course, has picked up one yellow card already. That came at the sixth minute. See here, Fairclough and Gonzalez. Gonzalez is on the ground. Just reaches his hand across there, trying to block the player. Gives him a little bit of an elbow in the uh, man zone there. Fairclough not happy with that and responds accordingly. But uh, referee right on top of that. Just talked to both players, calmed them down, and uh, on we go here. Mode is going to take this free kick from very deep. Uh, both center backs for the uh, Sounders, two are up. Left-footed, strong foot for Moda. Drives it low, top of the box, headed out of there by Vercadoni. Gonzalez hustles over, but well played here by Seattle. Trying to set it up, looking to cut this lead in half. They trail by a pair of goals. But J.J. Greer, Miguel Gonzalez, giving the switchbacks a two-goal lead here in the opening half. It's a great ball by Nate Robinson. Just unable to find Saeed Robinson there, but that was well played by Nate Robinson. Took his time, tried to switch the field there to Saeed, who's been, Saeed Robinson, excuse me, he's been trying constantly this game to get in behind that back line of the uh, Seattle Sounders. But Correa over there at left back of the, for Seattle has done a great job so far this evening. Ball down, headed up there by Anderson. Hot play, now Anderson with the left foot, taps it down to center seam. Moda working to his left, far side, bends it over one-on-one. -on -one. Jordan Burt defending for the switchback, still working left side of the 18. Ball in, and in front of the doorstep, a great defensive clear by the switchbacks. It was Nate Robinson there using a bit of his hip and a bit of his thigh there to get that ball out right on the doorstep. As you said, Josh, well defended there by Nate Robinson. That was a good chance for the Seattle Sounders FC2. This is a very good possession here for Seattle. Let's see if they can cash in quarter of the eight. 18 for Colony defends, crossed in, skips through. You had Fairclough on the back side, it sails through, and it will be throwing here for Seattle. Here's Kovar with the ball in. Kovar, very good player. Yeah, Nate Robinson there just using his uh, using his thigh to clear that ball. But uh, the Seattle Sounders S2 really come into this match here. Last five minutes are playing a lot better. Mode is getting further forward. He's beginning to pull the strings more for Seattle, and they're uh, really starting to boss possession here in the switchbacks half. Fairclough. Thrown into the box near side, headed back and out. And that will be switchback ball. So the first real good looks of the night for Seattle. They come up empty, but boy, that's going to be a good sign if you're Ezra Hendrickson. Uh, they look good on that possession. They did. Seattle's been getting better. Like I said, Moda's been getting on the ball as much as he can from this defensive, his deep lying midfield position. He's really been spraying that ball wide, overlapping runs from both full backs by the Seattle Sounders FC2. It's been better recently for Seattle, but they still haven't got any shots of uh, real menace on Dave Legoric's net yet. Gork, long ball down, and Mikhail Gonzalez off the chest and Ooh. bumped out, hits the turf, wants the call. He'll pop up and doesn't like the no call, but possession for the switchbacks. Getting a little chippy here as you see Miguel Gonzalez. Yep, defender just left a little bit, one in, gave him a little push into the Bass Pro Shop shop, Bass Pro Shops sign. Very easy for me to say, obviously, but uh, well played there by the referee who hasn't, in fact, given a free kick here for the switchbacks. It's going to be Nate Robinson to whip this one in with his right foot. J.J. Greer, Josh Phillips forward. Uh, Mike Seth as well. you got to look for him in the air. Robinson, of course, coming off that great ball in the corner to set up the goal by J.J. Greer. Here he is with another free kick. 36 minute. It'll come on the near side of the field. 
Put this one right on top of the penalty spot if you're uh, Nate Robinson. Whip this one in with your right foot, land it right on top of that penalty spot, right in the area between the, de the defensive line right now and the goalkeeper, right on the six-yard box penalty spot area. Official is getting him set on the far side of the box. And here we go, Nate Robinson to take the free kick. He has been so good for this team late in the season. As you can see, Miguel Gonzalez, Luke Furcanoli talking with the official there. It's uh, Damian Lowe and uh, Miguel Gonzalez. I think the referee's really singled out here. Just have a little talk with them. Just getting a little bit chippy there, but uh, Miguel Gonzalez a little bit unhappy about being pushed into the uh, advertising hoardings earlier. But uh, good job by the referee. Just talking to both captains, getting everybody calmed down. But uh, here's the chance here with Robinson. Robinson bends it in far post and securing his lion. Just too much air under that one, but good goalkeeping though. The goalkeeper made his made his uh, shout early. You could hear from up here in the broadcast booth. Came claim, came claimed the ball with two hands. That's good goalkeeping there by Lyon. So Greer to fitting at midfield, and Seattle will drop it back. Sounders on that back end. You got Fairclough, Low, Oxford, and Correa looking to pick up the tempo here. Switchbacks, that has been their MO. Up tempo to start here at home, and they get it here in the playoffs, and that ball headed into the quarter, and the switchbacks will control here, 38th minute. Seattle pushing ever further up the field here, really putting the switchbacks under some pressure. But like we said earlier, no shots yet on uh, to worry David Lagore. They're possessing the ball well. They're keeping it inside the switchbacks half when they want to. They're recycling the ball well between their midfield and their defense here, as we see. Once again, they're, they're perfectly comfortable on the ball, but they're just not able to break through that last line of the switchbacks defense. So on the back end, working is low to the center. Moda up to play it. Check that, that's Mansure. It's too far on that one. And try to connect up front with Darwin Jones and it sails through the end line. So the switch backs again will control on a goal kick here by David Agoric, taking it into the 39th minute. What a start for Miguel Gonzalez and company. Gonzalez, 14th minute, gets his 11th goal of the season, and that got him off and running some eight minutes later. A quarter kick. J.J. Greer scoring off a header off the quarter kick from Nate Robinson. That's where we stand here. Miguel Gonzalez to the open field and quickly the defense closing in here for Seattle, but a throw in for Miguel Gonzalez. Fans visit the 2015 USL playoffs on the USLsoccer.com website for everything you need to know about the chase for the USL championship. Quarter of the 18, Seth heads it over, skips through on a backside. Gonzalez there to chip it out. Jordan Burt, we haven't called his name a lot here in the right back position so far for the switchbacks tonight, but Jordan Burt's been great last couple of games of the uh, regular season, but. Uh, Josh Phillips under a little bit of pressure here. Dave Lagorich just got to clear this one down the field. That's what he does. Well done by the switchbacks. But as you can see, the uh, S2 pushing further and further forward, really putting a lot of pressure on the switchbacks back line, causing a turnover. Up front, this is Jones now. They'll wrap it back to the midfield area. It's Clough, Fair Clough rather, far side. And defended well by Jordan Burt. He backs off, and now Saeed Robinson up to pressure the ball. No disciplined defense so far by the switchbacks. Uh, not many breakdowns here in the opening half. You may well see if this score holds, you may well see Kareem Smith come off the bench, replace Saeed Robinson in the second half, have the switchbacks play with three central defenders, two wingbacks, and uh, Nate Robinson, Jordan Burt. We may well see that if this score holds out, but we've got a long way to go until uh, head coach Steve Pritchard makes that decision. Lower to the switchback center. There's Josh Phillips. Great quickness. Uses that left foot to pull the ball down. Now Shin Harada. Another giveaway by Shin. Not a good half for Shin. It's been a tough start, but his teammates right there for a motor now. Top of the 18. Goes over to the court of the 18. Seattle looking to try to get a spark offensively, but Jordan Bird, great recovery, and here comes Miguel Gonzalez. Good play there by Correa on the far side once again, but he's out of position now. Referee's not going to blow that one. Looked like Verkel only took a bit of a knock, but uh, Ch Chandler Hoffman for the uh, switchbacks just becoming a little bit isolated. Fans become a fan of the USL on Facebook for exclusive playoff news and in interactive content. Just overran that one there, Saeed Robinson on the far side. Just couldn't get on the ball. He beat one defender, but just overran that one. Unlucky for Saeed Robinson. Really hasn't found his feet yet in this game. So opportunity here for Seattle. Darwin Jones working on Robinson, and there's Phillips behind him. Cross top of the box, straight up of the air played by J.J. Greer. 
Well, Steve Tritchy has got to be pleased with his defense here tonight. They have been rock solid as Mike Seth plays it. Drops it off far side, and Jordan Burt to midfield. Unlucky there on Jordan Burt, but as you said, the defense has been great, limiting the shots on David Agoric. Goric, one of the best in the USL. We all know that, but he really hasn't had much to do tonight. He's made a couple of punch clearances from crosses, but other than that, Goric's been very untested. Out of the box, and again, defended well by the switchbacks. You take a look at the number, Charlie Line. He has been good this year. 1.71 goals against average, 80 saves on the counter. David Agoric, 61 saves. It shows you how clean that defense has kept David Agoric this season. Indeed, and if David Agoric had gotten a couple more starts, he'd be right up at the top of the statistical charts in the USL. But uh, if you divide his uh, his his games. His uh, game's played by the amount of saves that he's had and the shutouts that he's pitched. He's right up there among the best in this league. Nine shutouts this season for the young man out of West Virginia. has been outstanding. What a year and what a start to this postseason for Colorado Springs up. Two goals to done here. 42nd minute. And turned it back there by Shin Harada. Fine piece of defense by the veteran Shin Harada. So patience here on this possession by Seattle. Down a pair of goals. They'll chip it up to Fairclough. And the cross punched out of there by David Lagoric. Now there's Quick a reaction. There's the first real save by David Lagoric. Fairclough trying to be cheeky, trying to catch David Lagoric out at his near post. David Lagoric was leaning there for the, the cross. Fairclough takes a look up, tries to beat Goric at his near post. Two hands behind the ball, parries it well for a corner. That's a good save by David Lagoric. Wasn't 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 going to let that one sneak by him as we see Ziggy the mascot there for the switchbacks. So corner kick coming up here for Seattle. And Aaron Kovar will take it near side here, 43rd minute. Try to cut this lead in half. The Sounders, too, down a pair of goals. Kovar working with the left foot. Bends it in and headed out of there through the backside of the box. And Seattle now working on Miguel Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, a good win there in the corner. And it gets by, and Seattle's going to have to retreat. It's good defending there by Correa. They'll just recycle this ball, keep keep, keep one defender forward for now for the uh, Sounders, too. That ball's just not going to find him, though. That's unlucky for the Sounders. They had they had the possession. They had a couple of defenders push forward from that corner kick, but they just uh, just lost out on that one. They're just a bit of a lazy pass there, went out far sideline. Well, looking at the numbers as we tick towards the end of the opening half, and. Boy, domination of the opening half continues for the switchbacks. They've now outscored their opponents 29 to 16. Still a couple of minutes left to go, but boy, a huge statistical advantage for Colorado Springs. Can they close it out? They've had difficulties in the previous two meetings, but certainly tonight a different feel. Seattle would love to try to get back into this one, at least get a goal on the board before the end of the half. An opportunity here. Darwin Jones has been impressive tonight on this right flank. Uh, Nate Robinson has uh, done well to defend him, but uh, he won that free kick. He's gotten some gotten some crosses in and been a real outlet for the Seattle Sounders FC2 using his speed there, number 17, Darwin Jones. He's been, I've been impressed with him so far in the first half for the Seattle Sounders too. So Aaron Kovar to take it again here for Seattle. 45th Bennett. We got extra time, stoppage time coming up here at the end of this opening half. Kovar with the left foot. Good strike. Backside headed up. Punched out of there. The putback ricocheted out. That's a remarkable save there by Dave Lagoric. I can't tell who it was on the line. It might have been Shintaro Harada. I'm not exactly sure who made the second save on that one, but it definitely wasn't Goric. Goric with the first save. Magnificent world-class save, and then a defender throwing himself on the line. Dave Lagoric's going to catch that one cleanly. But what a saving tackle this is on the line here. I believe it might have been Shintaro Harada, but Dave Lagoric with the first uh, with the first of the two stops there as we take him to three minutes of stoppage time here at Sand Creek Stadium. And a world-class play by Dave Lagoric going high in the air to secure that ball he had pressure all around him he did here Kovar whipped that ball in great save there by Gork just not able to hang on to it looks like it was Miguel Gonzalez throwing himself in the way there it was Miguel Gonzalez laid it laid, laid his body on the line there, able to keep that one out and uh, first save there David Lagoric Miguel Gonzalez coming across making the save there looks like a turn maybe looks like it hit his back there Throwing his body on the line there, Miguel Gonzalez. That's a that's a goal-saving tackle. Obviously, it goes without saying. And uh, David Lagoric shook off that injury, but what a fantastic Miguel Gonzalez. He's made a goal and he saved a goal tonight. 
And the last play by David Agora going high in the air. A sensational play by the keeper for the switchbacks. You can see why he's one of the tops in the USL in shutouts. Nine shutouts coming into this postseason. He's been outstanding. You can see the tail end of the play by David Agoric, but boy, his size, but how about David going up at the highest point to secure? Catching that ball well, that was well done by David Agoric, and uh, perhaps the last chance of the half here for the switchbacks. Nate Robinson, top of the 18, headed up by Vercodoli. Backside, he had Mike Seth just a little too much. And the switchbacks, another chance here. Stoppage time, and to the opening half. Two to nothing, switchbacks out in front. Another Whole Foods corner kick here for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. The uh, defensive line there, the Sounders just got their wires crossed. You can hear the goalkeeper yelling, leave it, leave it. But uh, the defender headed it anyway out for a corner kick. Whole Foods corner kick here for the Colorado Springs switchbacks as we tick ever closer to the end of this first half. Been a great first half, I got to say. The switchbacks, last time they had a Whole Foods corner kick, they cashed in Robinson to J.J. Greer for the header. Two Nothing. Here's Robinson again. Good ball. And on the doorstep, Mike Seth tried to get a foot on it, but cleared out by Seattle. Referee called a foul there, but that ball found its way to Mike Seth. Nothing he could do about that. That ball was coming out of the trees there. Just landed right on Mike Seth's, uh, right there on Mike Seth's thigh. Nothing he could do there, but uh, well defended by Seattle. So Lyon, we're at stoppage time, some three minutes. So just about another minute plus to go. Extra time here in the opening half over the head of Mike Seth. Out of the near side, and the switchbacks will control perhaps one last push here at the end of the opening half. Robinson throw it over Seth Gonzalez. He has been outstanding here in the first 45 minutes. He has. Man of the match performance so far. I know it's just the end of the first half, and Miguel Gonzalez has been fantastic referee there, calling it into proceedings. 2 nothing switchbacks. Well, the crowd rises to their feet, and why not? What a performance by the switchbacks. Two goals to Seattle's none. We'll take a break, get the halftime showing right after this. Permanente, everything you need is under one roof. Another way care and coverage together makes life easier. Okay, a little easier. Become a member of Kaiser Permanente because together we thrive. Women are proving through history that they're a valuable asset on and off the battlefield. Discover this amazing documentary as it chronicles women in the military. A vision of valor, women warriors, all this month on Comcast Entertainment Television. Headed to the mountains? Watch Good Morning Veil vale now on CET Comcast Entertainment Television for everything you need to know before you hit the slopes. Good Morning Veil, vale, your local resource for mountain weather, snow totals, and travel conditions. We'll be your guide from the first chairlift ride to the final run of the season. So don't miss the fun. Watch Good Morning Veil vale live every day at 7 a.m. on Comcast Entertainment Television. Good Morning Veil, vale. be in the know before you go. It's another great month of live sports on CET featuring the debut of Northern Colorado football and volleyball. Catch it all exclusively on Comcast Entertainment Television. Out West's new season starts September 29th. Here's a peek on what's to come only on CET. and bred with a panther with turbines attached on ice shaved with a what the with the fastest speeds to the most homes the company that keeps making fast faster is doing it again introducing multi-gig speeds from xfinity the future of auto Shake off the winter cold by warming up your body with yoga. 
Kelly Moore will lead you through poses transforming your body and mind. Feel the sunshine on your skin as she instructs breath techniques, muscle control, and releasing tension. Living Yoga, now in stunning HD, only on Comcast Entertainment Television. At the half, this quarterfinal playoff matchup, the switchbacks at number three seed leading six seeded the Sounders two of Seattle by a score of two to nothing back here in the booth. Josh Howard, Roland Vargas, and Roland. It was a rough way to wrap up the regular season for the switchbacks, but boy, they have closed that chapter in a hurry tonight off to a great start. And it started with the play of Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel Gonzalez has been fantastic on the left-hand side for the Colorado Springs switchbacks in the first half, mixing it up a little bit physically as well as one of the smaller players on the field. But to be able to get that goal and to be able to save the goal at the other end there late in the first half, throwing his body on the line there from the corner kick for Seattle. Fantastic play by Miguel Gonzalez. That came in the 14th minute, some eight minutes later, a corner kick. Nate Robinson's really come on strong. A beautiful ball to set up J.J. Greer. Nate Robinson's been fantastic at left back. He was brilliant in the second half against the Los Angeles Galaxy 2 last week. Nice corner kick, and uh, Greer able to get on top of that one. The referees had a bit of confusion there with uh, Saeed Robinson being on the line, but they went. They had a talk. The referee talked to his assistant linesman, and they got that call correct. It was a goal for the switchbacks. 2-0 Colorado Springs. You take a look at the possession of this game, and the switchbacks have really controlled by a couple of minutes, but it's felt like more than that. Seattle coming on strong towards the end of the half. They have there. You can see Seattle with the four shots. Uh, fouls pretty even. Uh, corner kicks there. I, I think the uh, switchbacks might have had a couple more corner kicks than that. But uh, both teams have done well. Seattle really didn't start the game well. They looked like they were treading in mud. They looked like they were a little bit slow, had some concrete in their shoes. They looked really, really lethargic out there. But as the second, as the first half, excuse me, wore on, the Sounders came more and more into the game. Mata really pulling the strings for the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2, pushing further forward, pushing the switchbacks deeper in their line. And they were able to get some of those shots that you see there on the stat sheet. Well, one thing Seattle has shown this season amongst many things is the ability to keep games close, 16 games to decided by one goal or less. So certainly this is a team that is used to keeping it close, and you have to believe Ezra Hendrickson is going to make the necessary adjustments to come out here in the second half. I would imagine Pablo Rossi is going to be coming on maybe even at the start of the second half here for the Seattle Sounders FC2. Um, I really think that Seattle is going to attack the Colorado Springs switchbacks, try to play toward this goal at the north end. There as we see the uh, updated stats there, 26 minutes of possession to 18. I'm not a huge possession fan. I saw a game the other day where a team had 21% of the possession ended up winning the game. But fair enough, the Colorado Springs switchbacks have the two goals. That's what matters. They got the uh, shots on goal there, corner kick. So uh, we'll see what happens in the second half. All right, one half is in the books. The switchbacks with the lead in this one. Two to nothing. We'll take a break. The highlight from the opening half when we return. At Whole Foods Market, values matter. So the fresh fruits and vegetables we sell support organic and sustainable farming, grown locally on over 1,000 U.S. farms and globally with our ethical trade program. Rated for sustainability and grown by people with responsible farming practices like Staley Farms Organics. Because to us, value is inseparable from values. Whole Foods Market, America's healthiest grocery store. Discover real people finding self-reflection, dreams of superpowers, and the strength and courage of Batman. Tragedies become superpowers that each superhero can overcome. What would Batman do? Stand and fight. Legend of the Night, only on CET. Permanente, everything you need is under one roof. Another way care and coverage together makes life easier. Okay, a little easier. Become a member of Kaiser Permanente because together we thrive. Women are proving through history that they're a valuable asset on and off the battlefield. Discover this amazing documentary as it chronicles women in the military. A vision of valor. 
Women Warriors, all this month on Comcast Entertainment Television. This September on CET, the leaves are turning gold and our fall lineup is here. Check out a new season of XSR every Sunday at 6 p.m. Then bring a knife and fork and dig into our newest series, Let's Eat. Head outside for some fun activities and some sun on Out West. It's a month of new premieres and great programming. It's all this September on CET. Let's Eat, a show about eating. We travel down the Denver metro area to find the tastiest eats, drinks, and sweet treats. Tune in Thursday night to check out the newest, hippest, and yummiest places to get your eat on. Let's eat. Only on CET. Big Stadium quarterfinal matchup. The Switchbacks hosting the Sounders 2 and Colorado Springs with the lead. 2-0 is our score back here in the booth. Josh Howe, Roland Vargas, and Roland. Uh, some sensational plays of the first half. Uh, you saw the time of possession. Shots advantage for Seattle. But that first half really felt like it was controlled by Colorado Springs. The highlights certainly bear that out. They definitely do. Two goals for the Colorado Springs switchbacks here. As you see here, Chandler Hoffman, wonderful ball there into Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel Gonzalez just took his time, waited. Goalkeeper went down a little bit too soon. Far side of the net, you can see the goalkeeper leaning just a little bit there. Fantastic finish there by Miguel Gonzalez. That was one nothing switchbacks. And Chandler Hoffman has come on strong. The late addition coming over from Houston. And you can see the... Fans getting into this one tonight. Why not? Great crowd on hand. Sold out crowd. They're making some noise, and so is Nate Robinson on this corner. This one was a little bit confusing here for the referees. Magnificent leap by J.J. Greer. Got in behind his defender. Used his arm to create a little bit of space. Excuse me, got in front of his defender. Powered that ball into the ground. You can see the captain there, Luke Vercoloni, going over to the assistant referee. Have a bit of a talk. Saeed Robinson was standing on the goal line. He was ruled onside by the referees. That goal counted. 2-0 Colorado Springs switchbacks. So the switchbacks of the 22nd minute go up by a pair of goals, and David Agork doing what he has done all season long. He's been outstanding. Physical play, but for the most part, a clean first half. It was. You can see Miguel Gonzalez uh, mixing it up a little bit there physically with uh, some of the players from Seattle. He knows some of these players, like I said, went to Seattle University. And th this is this wonderful save by Gorick, and then Miguel Gonzalez throwing his body on the line, saving that goal there with his back. Fantastic save there by Miguel Gonzalez. He's been able to get a goal tonight. He's been able to save a goal tonight. So a man of the match performance in the first half by Miguel. Gonzalez. Shot there taken by Fairclough. And if you're Seattle, Ezra Hendrickson, adjustments. What are the keys coming into this one? That top end speed, would they be able to get back behind that defense of the switchbacks? How do you see that playing out here in half number two? Well, they obviously haven't been able to do it so far. I would see the uh, Sounders FC2 push Mata a little bit further forward, maybe bring on Pablo Rossi. Uh, they, they, it's been difficult for the Sounders to get in behind the switchbacks. The switchbacks have been doing a good job, but a lot of that starts in the midfield for Seattle. They're really having a difficult time recycling the ball in midfield. I think that's because Mata is getting pushed further and further back. Bring him a little bit far forward, further forward, excuse me, let him pull the strings a little bit more. I think Seattle might, might create some more chances. On the flip side for the switchbacks, they were able to press, get activity up front, resulting in goals. Do they sit back, possess less this second half? They may well do that. I wouldn't be surprised to see Kareem Smith come onto the field, maybe to replace Saeed Robinson. I think head coach Steve Tritchie would definitely wait a few minutes before making that decision, but uh, you may see the switchbacks try to sit on this lead, try to ride this one out. We'll see how it plays out. 45 minutes in the books, 45 to go. The switchbacks heading into the second half with a two-goal lead. Doing what we do for a living, we have to give that extra mile, even when you think you can't because not only are we taking care of people, but we're taking care of ourselves. At Centura, it is a culture of health. And as a group, we've brought that to the forefront to demonstrate to patients. See Juliana's inspiring story at CenturaConnected.org. Out West's new season starts September 29th. Here's a peek on what's to come, only on CET.
It's another great month of live sports on CET, featuring the debut of Northern Colorado football and volleyball. Catch it all exclusively on Comcast Entertainment Television. Let's eat. A show about eating. We travel down the Denver metro area to find the tastiest eats, drinks, and sweet treats. Tune in Thursday night to check out the newest, hippest, and yummiest places to get your eat on. Let's eat. Only on CET. This September on CET, the leaves are turning gold and our fall lineup is here. Check out a new season of XSR every Sunday at 6 p.m. Then bring a knife and fork and dig into our newest series, Let's Eat. Head outside for some fun activities and some sun on Out West. It's a month of new premieres and great programming. It's all this September on CET. David Gork, one half of shutout soccer in the books. One more to go as the switchbacks look at it, try to advance on to the semifinals here in the Western Conference. Here in this quarterfinal match, they've got the lead, two to nothing over Seattle here and rolling. One and a half for Miguel Gonzalez. David Gork, this switchbacks team certainly has kept the pedal down here since that opening kick. Yeah, I saw a lot of players warming up on the field during the halftime break, but uh, doesn't appear to be any changes here to start the second half from either team, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see changes, especially from Seattle early in the second half. Seattle up front, they've got Anderson and Mansaray, Kovar, Moda, Long, Jones in the midfield positions, and on the back end, Fairclough, Lowe, and Oxford, and Correa. And headed up there by Correa. Pinballed around Saeed Robinson lurks and one of the matchups to look for here in the second half. Said Robinson out on the wing and nearly a giveaway there by Correa. Well recovered in the end there, but he doesn't want to clear the ball down the center of the field. Shin trying to connect with Mike Seth high up in the air for Canote on the doorstep. Punched out of there by Lyon. And now Saeed. Doubled up in the corner, ricochets out and that will be he got the corner kick that he wanted there. Well played there by Saeed Robinson. Good defense again there by Correa. He's done very well tonight. He hasn't been able to push forward as much as he would normally like, but he has done well in that defensive left back spot there, Correa. The first quarter kick of the second half and over to take it again, Nate Robinson. Robinson, the assist on that quarter kick of the opening half, 22nd minute, fed J.J. Greer, who put in it with the header and you can see their lines punching it out here pressure early on by the switchbacks they could get a third here early in this game this might kill this one off Robinson and backside bounce up high bounce and line able to secure it above his head it was Mike Seth there flying through the air I'm not sure how much contact he got on that one but it was another good corner kick whipped in there by Nate Robinson and uh, unlucky there for the switchbacks but uh, did get something on target there well saved easy save there and uh, magnificent leap there by Mike Seth David Gork, some outstanding keeping in that first 45 minutes of play. Gork making five saves. A 2 0 lead for the switchback. Shin nice. around a nice move at midfield. Shin into the Seattle in and 
ball in to Lyon to secure and quickly on the throw out and you can sense Seattle really trying to pick up the tempo here in the second half. They are but the switchbacks aren't letting them they're pressing them very high up the field they're getting back defensively winning the ball back again here easily that was a nice move previously by Shintaro Harada his final pass just letting him down but the uh, switchbacks perfectly comfortable here in possession inside their own half and just as I say that J.J. Greer boots the ball out of bounds but commentators curse fair enough Correa will take this throw in for the Seattle Sounders FC2. So Seattle not unfamiliar territory here in Colorado Springs. They trail one or nothing at the half. The last time these two teams met here in the Springs on July 18th. But again, it was just a one goal lead. And they came back to answer with a Sergio Moto goal in the 61st minute. But here down two. And right now, it has been all Colorado Springs. A dominated time of possession. And now on the run, Vercolotti up ahead. He's got Hoffman, Hoffman now the quarter of the 18 and sliding stop there by Lyon. Just too far there for Chandler Hoffman. It was a nicely timed run to stay on side there for Hoffman. Vercoloni won the ball well. Hoff Hoffman's run a good race tonight. He just hasn't been able to get on the end of a lot of these passes. But Chandler Hoffman giving his all to get to this one. Good goalkeeping there. Fast off his line, uh, Lyon, and uh, made a good save there at the feet of uh, Chandler Hoffman. Well saved there. Anderson back to midfield now. And They'll play it up. It's Aaron Long on the far side. Seattle looking to generate some kind of offense at a giveaway there by the Sounders, too. You know, it's been impressive what both these teams have done in their first seasons of play of the USL. The Sounders, too, obviously you have talent up and down, so it's been tough for Ezra Hendrickson in terms of maintaining continuity, but somehow they've found a way to get to the postseason. But right now, they are on their heels. The switchbacks has been the better team to this point. And a yellow card issued here on Seattle. Not sure who that yellow card went to there. Went to low. Did go to low. It comes at a 49th minute. So the second yellow card issued to the Sounders, too. It was Fairclough picking up the first in the sixth minute. And it was Miguel Gonzalez there that drew that yellow card again. The uh, aggressive. Tricky play of Miguel Gonzalez there, just drawing the foul there from uh, from low. So free kick here for Nate Robinson. It's a very dangerous position to find yourself in if you're the Seattle Sounders FC2. As we've already seen, the Colorado Springs switchbacks can be can be deadly here from set pieces. You know, one of the things is Robinson takes this kick in front of the box. It'll sail through the end line. Steve Trich, you talked about it. You know, perhaps an advantage of not earning that first round by staying fresh, keeping their legs, and it's looking to be that way so far. So a quarter kick coming up, a Heineken quarter kick here by Nate Robinson. It was Chandler Hoffman that found himself on the end of that one, but I couldn't see which defender it was that got himself involved. But a nice tackle there right at the end by Seattle Sounders FC2 defender as we have the Heineken corner kick on the far side, once again taken by Nate Robinson. He takes him on both sides here tonight. So Robinson with his team up, a pair of goals, 51st Bennett with the right foot, bends it in, and big hop in front of the goal box, and up over the crossbar, out of play. That was Josh Phillips on the end of that one. That was a nice save by Lyon. He was originally down. He reached his right hand up, made a nice save there, but uh, that was, I think that was Josh Phillips there that directed that one on target. So he bent in well. It was off the, off the back of Josh Phillips. Didn't know much about it, but that's a good save there by Lyon with his right hand. Back to live action, backside. He had Mike Seth waiting on the doorstep, and now the run, and J.J. Greer unable to stop it. Here comes Lowe to midfield. Lowe with the right foot, good ball down the seam, but nobody home. The Sounders FC2 had a real opportunity there. Phillips, Greer pushed for, far up the field. It was Shintaro Harada dropping back into central defense, a position that he started his career in, obviously. But uh, the Seattle Sounders FC2 really had a chance there to put some pressure on the switchbacks, weren't able to do it. That final pass just letting them down again as they're about to make a substitution here just about five, six minutes into the second half. Seth with the right foot up to Sider. Robinson just misses in line out to play it. It's been a good, good active start to the second half so far here. Well, plenty of depth coming off the bench for the Sounders, too. So much talent for Ezra Hendrickson. Right now, he needs it. His team trying to generate some kind of offense down a pair of goals. Here's Kovar. There to the switch backs in, working with the left foot. And now Kovar drops it back to Long. Long 
Ball in, so right side, side court so of the side. box, and just off the mark is a little too far out in front of that far flank. Starwin Jones again, very good in the first half, getting down the right-hand side for the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2. Just found himself offside there, as we see a substitution here. So Pablo Rossi surprise, in for the surprise. first time tonight. The leading goal scorer for the Sounders, too, coming off the bench. Eight goals, a couple of assists. He's taken more shots than any player on the Sounders, too, this year. So certainly, you want offense, you get it with number 55. Pablo Rossi, very good player, a bit of a geography lesson here. He's from Rosario, Argentina. Rosario, famous for Lionel Messi, Angel Di Maria, Marcelo Bielsa, and some guy named Ernesto Che Guevara. So definitely got some uh, soccer in his blood here. Pablo Rossi's had a very good season so far for the Sounders FC2. They want him to make the step to the next level. He's just got to bulk up a little bit, just got to gain a little bit of that strength. That's why he's here in the USL, getting these minutes under his belt. But he's been fantastic so far this season for the Sounders FC2. So we'll see what kind of difference maker Rossi he can be here 53rd minute as he checks in early part of the second half his team down a pair of goals and physical play at a far side and Seth gets by him and it's a very tricky player, Rossi. And when you have Rossi and Mata on the field at the same time, those are two players that can create their own space and they can play that de that deadly killer final pass up to the forwards there. So the switchbacks really are going to have to change what they're doing now with the inclusion of Rossi. He's a very dangerous player. So Rossi will take the free kick on the far side. This team gets in position, top of the box. 54th minute. Two to nothing switchbacks in front. Rossi, free kick in front of the box and deflected out of there by Luke Bercadotti. Chases the ball. Rossi heads it right back in. Battle there. Seth hits the ground hard. Referee's going to call that one. Mike Seth, defender just going under him there. Seth coming down hard on his back. Fans, a reminder, all USL playoff matches are available live, free, and in HD on YouTube. Follow the action on the USL YouTube channel to watch the crowning the 2015 USL champion. You see here Mike Seth going down. Just a nasty way for Mike Seth to land right down on the side of his rib cage there. That was uh, a Shawnee Fairclough. It's like battling Seth there. Referee just going to make this one, excuse me, Josh, referee just going to make the switchbacks take this one again. Switchbacks just trying to run down the clock a little bit already here in the second half. So the switchbacks on a gorgeous September 25th night here in Colorado Springs playing the two-goal lead. Fans have got to love it. And, boy, this is kind of making up for some of those games we saw earlier in the season. A lot of a couple of washouts here at Sand Creek Stadium. The field just tough conditions, but... As the season is gone for the switchbacks, they have played through, and you can see another substitution for Seattle. Rossi's in, and now joining him at number 88, that's Samuel Garza, the midfielder. Sam Garza, another player with MLS quality. Obviously, a lot of these uh, Seattle Sounders FC2 players either have that or will have that in the near future, but Sam Garza, quality player. It's another player that's had a good season. I was surprised to see him on the bench at the start of this game, but uh, to bring, be able to bring on Garza, Rossi, that's a wealth of options there for Ezra Henderson. And strong substitution, strong offensive substitutions for the Sounders here early in the second half. Try to get loose. Uh, ball up top to Mercadoni. Now has sent it back to David Agoric. And a high strike out of the box. And head right back in by low. Shin Harada, patience and good job with the right foot to play it back to Phillips. Possession game. We'll see here in the second half. Switchbacks have had opportunities and substitutions for Seattle. The switchbacks countering with one of their own. The return of Ronnie Argetta. Nice sight here for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. And Shin Harada, the veteran, exits. Well, it'll be, uh, I think it's Saeed Robinson Saeed. actually that are coming off. Yeah, it will be Saeed Robinson coming off for uh, Ronnie Argetta. Ronnie Argetta is just going to sit right on top of J.J. Greer, Josh Phillips, try to plug up that midfield. He'll allow Shintaro Harada to push a little bit forward. And what that will do is it'll push Mike Seth, who is playing centrally, out onto the right wing where Saeed Robinson was playing. So uh, Mike Seth to the right wing, Ronnie Argetta defensive midfield alongside Shintaro Harada right in front of J.J. Greer, Josh Phillips. And Argetta has been dinged up a little bit here late in the season, but certainly back into playing condition 
And what a run by Saeed Robinson in that opening 45 plus minutes early part of the second half. He gave Steve Trichu some fantastic time here tonight. He did. He gave the speed uh, that the switchbacks needed on that right hand flag. Mike Seth brings a little bit more of a physical presence out to that right hand side. That's exactly what the switchbacks want here leading to nothing and trying to hold on to this lead here. Josh Phillips just going in there had eyes for the ball. Well called by the referee. It was a foul but no need for a card there by uh, the referee. Josh Phillips uh, uh, just into the back of the uh, Sounders FC2 player there. So Aaron Kovar will set it up on a free kick. Miguel Gonzalez, about 10 feet off the ball, Kovar. Sets up for the left-footed strike. 58th minute, Sounders two down a pair of goals. Kovar very dangerous from this range. Not obviously to score, but to put this one right on top of the box here. Very good on these set pieces there in Kovar. Kovar, left-footed strike out of the box, headed out of there. Good position by the switchbacks, right back in, retreating defensively, and now headed to the top of the box. Argetta flicks it back. Help on the back end now. Ball in, headed up, and that is over the crossbar. Hung up there for a long time, but Gorick in good position. It did. David Legorick just shepherded that ball over his crossbar. It was a nice attack there by the Seattle Sounders FC2. They were able to gain some space after that initial cross was uh, cleared. Able to get the switchbacks just a little bit loose there, pushing up the field a little bit too early, but uh, the shot not really troubling David Legorick at all. So Gorick now the goal kick with a cushion, 59th minute. Headed high up in the air by Aaron Long. Argetta, and we got a whistle there. Collision between Long and Argetta. Going against Ronnie Argetta there. A little bit late there by Argetta. As we see here, Dave Lagore just making sure this one goes over. Didn't touch the ball. His hands were inside the uh, crossbar, but just making sure that one went over from the uh, really great camera angle there that we have behind the north goal. That gave us the great angle, obviously, on the switchback second goal with uh, Saeed Robinson there on the line. Crew doing another fantastic job tonight here in this quarterfinal playoff mat matchup. The winner of this one advances on to Oklahoma City to take on the energy. The number two seed, that game will take place on Sunday the 4th. A 4 o'clock mountain time start. It's an awkward start time. Could be quite hot still down there in Oklahoma uh, for that matchup. Switchbacks haven't done well against the state of Oklahoma this entire season. Obviously, they were able to uh, get a tie on one occasion, but they just haven't done well against teams from Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So that'll be a real test for the switchbacks if, in fact, they're able to hold on to this result. So another substitution here for Seattle. Out goes a Shawnee Fairclough. Checking in is Amadou Sonyang. So Sonyang in for the first time tonight. It comes in the 60th minute. Fairclough had to go out. He was on that yellow card from very early in the game. I believe it was the fifth minute he picked up that yellow card. So they really did need to bring him off to save him uh, from any chance of being red carded. The last thing the Seattle Sounders FC2 need now, obviously, is to go down the man. Pace of this game, Roland's really changed. It has. Obviously, the switchbacks really pressing in the opening half. They got a couple of goals early part of that first half, 14th minute, 22nd minute, but an entirely different feel, and for good reason when you've got a two-goal lead in hand. Yeah, being able to bring off Saeed Robinson and bring on Ronnie Argetta, really shore up that central midfield position, really put some concrete and some steel right there in the center of the field. That really helps take the uh, take the sting out of some of these Sounders F2, FC2 attacks. But obviously, you don't get that outlet on the right side that you had with Saeed Robinson. Working on a good ball to Miguel Gonzalez. Some space now to the scene with Shin Harada. Shin working to his left, drops it back here to Roddy Argetta. And a possession game right now on this trip down to the Seattle end for the switchbacks. Bercadotti wills between the defense, splits it, right foot, Mike Seth now. Ball in, the cross, and Bercadotti just a little too far out in front. Unlucky there, beautifully chipped ball, almost like a golf wedge there, right on top of Luke Bercadotti, just too far for the switchbacks captain to get on the end of that one, but that was a nice pass and a nice move by the switchbacks. And again, Seattle trying to connect with Anderson. That was one of the game plans going in, but boy, they have not been able to connect tonight. He's been very isolated, Alex Anderson, very isolated. Visit the 2015 USL Playoffs Hub on USLsoccer.com for everything you need to know about the chase for the USL Championship only on USLsoccer.com. 
Some great articles on USLsoccer.com, the playoff preview, Western and Eastern Conference. And so much talent, so many storylines going into this postseason. Watch out for the Rochester Rhinos. That's all I've got to say. They were the dominant team, the points champions in the 2015 regular season, and certainly the team to beat in the East. Not only the East, I would have to say this entire league, indeed, but indeed. we'll see obviously just one matchup with the East. He's on side. Oh, the ball just ran out. But we've seen some uh, coaching turnover just today. Arizona United not renewing the head, the uh, contract of their head coach. So we've seen a lot of turnover, even though the season, the regular season, excuse me, just barely ended. So uh, USL obviously making moves day in, day out. And uh, it's great to see the playoffs here beginning here in Colorado Springs with this match, which uh, I think obviously from a switchback's perspective has been a good match. But I think from a neutral's perspective, they'll be happy as well. A lot of uh, offensive soccer, some chances at both ends, some good last minute uh, goal line clearances. I think it's been a really good game. Well, the switchbacks like the score with a two-goal lead in hand. Steve Trichu at his playoff debut. And a big reason why David Agoric has been sensational. Five saves in that opening half. And some difficult saves at that. And the crowd certainly fired up tonight. An electric atmosphere here at Sand Creek Stadium. Throwing far side here by the switchbacks. He'll get it to the captain, Bercoloni. And now that ball not well struck there and a turnover for the switchbacks. Well done by Jordan Burt. That's fantastic defending by Jordan Burt. He was pushed forward. He came back, got his foot stuck in there, made a challenge there. I believe that was on Garza, but I can't be sure. That was just fantastic defending there by Jordan Burt. Bercoloni losing his footing. And Last touch there by Ockford, the captain. Haven't called number 21's name often tonight. On the defensive side, the switchbacks have pressed all night. Mike Seth now, flick back. Hoffman. Mata's got to get more involved here. He's really been on the periphery in this second half. He's pushing forward now, number 89 for the Sounders, too, but he's really got to get his foot on the ball here, Sergio hey, Mata. Garza, you can see the burst there by number 88 who came out of the second half. Sam Garza, that speed on the wing. Ball in, it's up, and it sails wide to the post on the left side. So close to cutting this lead in half. And it was Sergio Mata at the back post there, but that ball whipped into the front post. David Lagoric came out, tried to make the save, was unable to do that. I think that ball might have missed everybody there. Straight in here from Pablo Rossi with his right foot. That was a nasty ball in. Jordan Burt just holding up the play there. And just unlucky there for Mata, who was coming in at the back post. Just too much pace on the ball for the Brazilian to get his foot on the end of that one. It was as if this crowd had been lulled to sleep, and that woke him up for a moment. A near make. Would have cut this lead in half. Instead, it remains a two-goal advantage here for the switchback, 65th minute. A goal for the Sounders, too, obviously goes without saying, even though I'm saying it stupidly, but a goal for the Seattle Sounders, too, really going to set up a great finale to the end of this game. Kovar drops it back to midfield. They'll play up. And Son Yang. He's just playing that defensive midfield position, Song Yang, since he came in. They've just gone to three at the back, uh, a main three at the back, with two wing backs dropping back now for uh, the Seattle Sounders just to try to get a little bit more width and a couple more players push forward. It's more of a back three than the original back four that they started with. There's Ockford swinging it near side to Correa. As soon as I say that, they go back to the back four. But here's Correa. He's been very good uh, so far with his left foot here, Correa. I've been impressed with him. There to the switchbacks in. Correa with the left foot trying to drop it up to Anderson. A little bump in the back there by J.J. Greer. And he is ticketed with the foul. J.J. Greer not fond of that call, but it looks like he was. I think he just caught the back of Anderson there. We'll see on the replay. But the referee, excuse me, the referee, uh, Blew that one dead, and it's a nasty position here to give up a free kick. It was just held off Anderson a little bit there, had his arm wrapped around him a little bit, and uh, fair enough, a free kick for the Seattle Sounders, too, in a dangerous position here for, the, uh, for a switchback's perspective. Pablo Rossi right on top of it with his right foot, Aaron Kovar with the left foot. A lot of options here for Seattle. Dave Lagoric's got to be on his toes. So Mikael Gonzalez drops about 15 feet back of the ball. You got Rossi on the left. Kovar on the right, Rossi takes it, bends it in, far post, punched out of there with the right hand by David Agoric. Well done by David Agoric, made that call early, decided to come, got his right fist on that ball, punched it out for a Whole Foods corner kick on the far sideline. 
over to take it Aaron Kovar. So opportunity here for Seattle. This one a long way from being over. 67th minute. And David Agora continues to be outstanding between the posts tonight. Made his mind up instantly there. Came out, cleared well with his right hand. Whole Foods corner kick here for the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2. Kovar left footed backside up to get ahead on it was Damian Lowe, but he was falling back. Great attempt. But the Sounders, too, again, come up empty on a set piece. Just a little bit too much mustard on that cross there from Aaron Kovar. Got under it just a little bit. Ball hung up in the altitude here of Colorado Springs. Unable for the, uh, the defender who was pushed forward there from the back to get his head onto the end of that one with any real purchase. And uh, lucky there for the switchbacks, the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2 had some men on the backside on a bit of an overload there. Foul against Mike Seth. Mike Seth was just held down there. I'd like to welcome all those of you watching here on CET Sports and listening. On the radio as well, KRDO News Radio 105.5 FM at 1240 AM and around the world on the web. Streaming live, playoff soccer, quarter final action. A switch backs up, two goals. Shin Harada on a free kick. Seth heads it up. And Chandler Hoffman, good chase on the far side, but not in time. It will be switch back ball. I wonder how many gift amber ales they're deep now at uh, Odin Brewing Company in Tukwila. <laughs> I'm guessing quite a lot. That's a great beer. It's a nice place there up in Washington. Yeah, I love the fan, the energy of the Pacific Northwest. Indeed. The Sounders, too, their inaugural season. Like the switchbacks reaching the postseason. When you talk about the future of this league, some additions here announced for the regular season, of course. Texas, Nevada, Ohio, all adding teams for the future. This league is growing and continues. The quality of play gets better and better as this season has gone on. It does. I was very happy to see both the Portland Timbers, too, and the Seattle Sounders, too, get teams here. You see Pablo Rossi getting free down the left, but uh, J.J. Greer, magnificent tackle over to win that ball. But I was very happy to see those teams come into the USL. Anything from the Pacific Northwest to uh, generate more passion and more pride for soccer, where it really is a hotbed of soccer in this country. You have the Northeast that does pretty well but nobody beats the Pacific Northwest. I mean, they pack the stadiums there. They do a wonderful walk uh, down through downtown before the uh, Seattle Sounders F uh, Seattle Sounders of MLS, excuse me, games. It's a really wonderful rivalry they have there with both Vancouver, but especially with Portland Timbers. It's a, it's a wonderful area of soccer in that part of the country and reaching into Canada, obviously, now with the Whitecaps. So very happy that they have teams in the USL. Son Yang battling in the quarter there. That's going to be a quarter kick here for... Seattle, so another opportunity on a set piece for the Sounders, too, and Kovar over to take it again. They've had some real chances, but Gork has just been a little bit better. So Aaron Kovar checked out a free kick coming up. He'll take it in the corner. That Miguel Gonzalez. Some 15 yards away, Kovar now backs up just a hair. This is a nice place for Kovar to be able to whip the ball in with his left foot here, just giving him a little bit of space off the end line here. Strike by Kovar, bent in on a goal box, and now cleared out of there with a the right foot by Luke Furcoloni. That was a fantastic chance there for the Seattle Sounders FC2. The switchbacks can consider themselves lucky. More last, last dish, last ditch defending, easy for me to say. Got another substitution for Seattle. It'll be Aaron Kovar, the man that just took that ball to come out of the game, I believe. Yeah, it will be Aaron Kovar being replaced here. Kovar out, and in comes Carlos Patino. So fourth substitution to the second half for Ezra Hendrickson. And we mentioned it earlier in this broadcast, the talent, the depth on this team. You have your leading goal scorer, Pablo Rossi, coming off the bench. And Waves just keep coming, but playing at 6,500 feet, down two goals. They need all the energy they can get. Hoppin now on the run with the switchbacks and a good takeaway there defensively by Seattle. Just hasn't happened for Chandler Hoffman tonight. He's been running, running his socks off. He's been doing great work off the ball, but he just hasn't been able to find that killer final pass, and the ball just hasn't been able to find him in enough space for him to be able to get a shot off. It's been an unlucky performance so far tonight for Chandler Hoffman. He's really worked hard for the team, but just hasn't been able to get the uh, requisite shots on goal. Garza out of the switch back in. That'll get through the end line. You get the feeling Seattle's just a hair off here tonight. They have played well, great energy, but 
and just not been able to connect on the offensive end. They have some good ball possession, as you said, but a lot of that has been in, in their own half or just getting across into the top of the switchbacks half, playing it between their defenders and their defensive midfielders. And uh, I, I wish they would have pushed Mata a little bit farther forward uh, earlier in the game, maybe even started with Rossi as we, we saw come on. He's been he's been good. Um, it's just been an unlucky performance so far here by the Sounders. They, they haven't looked bad, but they've just looked a little bit off the pace set by the switchbacks. Hey, you talk about a guy leading the charge for the Sounders too, Ezra Hendrickson. Uh, certainly a decorated player, multiple MLS Cup wins. And on the flip side, you talk strategy. Steve Trichu, a decorated resume of his own, a long-time professional career at all levels. Of course, uh, capping at the MLS level, player to the uh, for the national team, the World Cup. This is a uh, a great coaching matchup here tonight. But on the field playing out, personnel advantage switchbacks. They have executed better tonight for Steve Trichu. And we just saw more of that hard work there by Chandler Hoffman almost winning the ball back. Nice run here by Correa. But uh, Chandler Hoffman almost winning the ball back. Just unlucky there for Chandler Hoffman. Garza drops it back. Ricochets off career. Gets through by Arqueta. And our Armstrong, or rather Robinson. In a possession game here in the second half, the switchbacks content just to take it away and absorb time. Follow at USL on Twitter to keep up with all the latest live action during the 2015 USL playoffs. Playoffs started tonight. Quarterfinal matchup, the top two seeds in each conference earning buys of the Western Conference. Orange County came down to the final match of the season. They were able to squeak one out against Sacramento Republic enough to get them to that top seeded position. Oklahoma City drops to two, so those are your one and two seeds of the West. The switchbacks, of course, with the number three seed here against six seeded Seattle and with the lead using home field to their fullest advantage. Here's Fercololi, top of the 18, right side, good ball out to Seth. Seth the cross in. And that is positioned well by Seattle. They've been better defensively, Seattle, in the second half, but they just haven't been able to create the chances that their uh, ball possession deserves. At what point do they really start to hit the panic button for their... Well, I think they already have, to be honest with you. Moda's pushed further forward. They brought on a couple of very offensive substitutions, and it looks like they're about to make another substitution here on the uh, far sideline soon. David Lagoric in a bad position there. Doesn't want to find himself out there, David Lagoric, but... Uh... Yeah, just having a little talk with the player, just explaining to him that he didn't make any contact with him there, just trying to take a little bit of time off the clock, but it looks as though the Sounders FC2 are going to make another substitution here. So Seattle now making their fifth change here in the second half. And Gorick out there. Doesn't look like there's any contact. Shot skied well over the bar. Pablo Rossi on the push and laying long, rather, and checks long. out of the yep. game. And in for the first time tonight, that's Duncan McCormick. McCormick, he's played a lot uh, some of the previous games against the uh, switchbacks this season. He's a good player. He's a tricky little player. He knows what to do on the ball. So, again, a good offensive substitution by the uh, Sounders FC2, just trying to do anything they can to try to liven up their attack here in the second half as we take ever closer to the end of this game. Seattle running out of time here, 75th minute. And a substitution for the switchbacks now, the second one. Davey Armstrong on for Miguel Gonzalez. Gonzalez was fantastic tonight. Saved a goal, scored a goal. Wonderful play there by Miguel Gonzalez. And to bring on Davey Armstrong, that's another defensive substitution for the switchbacks to turn to counter what uh, Seattle Sounders FC2 are doing offensively here. So get a Armstrong in here, the second half. Saeed Robinson, Miguel Gonzalez out. The switchbacks control it at midfield. Jordan Burt now. Throwing, and it gets by Chandler Hopp, and you got Vercoloni lurking, and Correa able to play it back to his keeper, Lyon. Been impressed with, by Correa tonight. I think he's been probably the best player on the field for the uh, Seattle Sounders FC2. He's done his defensive job admirably. He's tried his best to push forward whatever he can. Been very, very impressed uh, tonight by Andreas Correa. Well, the switchbacks team, you talk about bounce back and resolve, showing that here tonight. A bitter defeat in the regular season finale as Seth moves in. Top of the box, good ball up. 
And Al Bercaloni drifting back, and they are content just to set it up and grind the clock. Why not? Sounders FC2 can't score, obviously, when the switchbacks have the ball, so they're very confident in possession here. No need to get this ball into the box uh, any earlier than it absolutely needs to. Just uh, take these throw-ins as they come, put their foot on top of the ball, control the center of the midfield now. It's more of a 4-2-3-1 formation now with the switchbacks when they're on defense. Ronnie Argueta playing next to Shintaro Harada. It's very difficult for the Sounders FC2 to break them down. Jordan Burt come over to play here, and they are content to play this game. 77th minute, two-goal lead. Working here in the Seattle end. Throwing to Chandler Hoppin, doubled up, ricocheted off. And again, the switchbacks in no hurry to get that ball. And boy, what a, a night for the switchbacks. They came out, played their game, up-tempo, pressed. Picked up a couple of goals, and now they're able to sit back and make Seattle try to work their way back into this match, down two goals. Chandler Hoffman really deserves the ball to bounce his way. Referee looks like he's going to come over here. Give a yellow card to Jordan Bird for time wasting. It's been unlucky for Jordan Bird, but uh, fair enough from the referee. But all that's going to do is take more time off the clock. So uh, switchbacks will be happy with that. But uh, Jordan Bird picking up the yellow card for time wasting there to throw it. But as I, as I was saying, uh, Chandler Hoffman just deserves a bit of a bounce. He's really run his socks off tonight. He's been fantastic, I think, for the switchbacks leading their line. He's become isolated at times, but that hasn't stopped his, uh, his aggression or his movement off the ball. He really deserves one to bounce his way. Big hop, flick back on the header there by the switchbacks, and Harada not able to get there. Long ball down. Phillips has got it covered. He's going to let it roll to David Agoric. Here to the top of the box, and Gorick picks it up. As Seattle pressured, and now J.J. Greer, second goal of the game, and Greer ball down. He had Bercoloni in the scene, but just overshot everybody. Very happy for J.J. Greer to be able to get on the score sheet. We saw he took a couple of long shots, took a great one against Los Angeles Galaxy, just went over the crossbar. He's very fond of those long strikes, but uh, he comes forward for all the corner kicks, obviously, for the switchbacks, and for him to finally be able to get on the end of one of them, put it away. Very happy for uh, J.J. Greer. Flick there by, flick, flick back, I should say, by Ronnie Argetta. And now Robbins here to the quarter. Looked like a bit of a handball there, but uh, ball to hand, not hand to ball, so not called by the referee. Fair enough there. Now, finally, a foul called against uh, Nate Robinson. Looks like on the far side. There it is. You take a look at this switchbacks team as we get another look at this physical play here late in the second half. 50-50 ball, both players going for it. Nate Robinson uh, just called for the foul there. So free kick for Seattle. It's Rossi far side to take it. Right footed strike ball in and right back out with the left foot by Luke Bercaloni. Got to beat that first man. Seattle has to beat that first man from these set pieces. Become a fan of the USL on Facebook for exclusive playoff news and interactive content. Body by Jordan Burt. Nearly a giveaway there off the right foot of Sam Garza. Now Garza into the quarter ball in and headed out of there by Josh Phillips. Always seems to be in the right place on the defensive end. Great positioning there between Phillips and Greer. Headed off for Shin Harada, and now Seth. It's good possession here by the Sounders, but they really got to turn it into a chance on uh, David Gorick's goal. They've been able to keep the ball well, but just haven't been able to get a shot on Gorick's goal. Midfielders hop and great move, a little too well heavy on that touch, and well now back to Mike Seth. Seth up ahead, and he's got Armstrong on the left side. Armstrong working it in the quarter. He'll move towards the box, Armstrong. Oh, oh. great move along the end line. Armstrong moves it, shot, ricochets up and out. Great save there by Lyon with his feet, but a nice, nasty piece of trickeration there by Davey Armstrong. Little step over, little Cristiano Ronaldo, little I'm going to go this way, I'm going to go that way. Have some of that, Mr. Defender. Put his defender on his backside here. Look at this, little step over. Whoopsie daisy, goes right around him. Davey Armstrong looks the goalkeeper off, but that's a nice save at his near post there by Lyon with his feet. Good goalkeeping. Duncan McCormick defending on that play, and now a Heineken quarter kick here for Nate Robinson. A strike hit it up and just off the mark. J.J. Greer again there. He just was turned. It looks like it came off the side of his head, but J.J. Greer just unable to put that one on net as we see another substitution here for the switchbacks. 
going to be uh, Kareem Smith coming on for Mike Seth. Yeah, that was a, a move you felt we would see perhaps earlier in this game go more defensive. Clearly they have, and Kareem Smith, big physical player. He started this season in the starting lineup, battled some injuries, but Kareem's done a great job. He's played a role, a significant role, as this season has gone on. He has. He's going to come in. He's going to form a five-man defensive line, I believe, here. He's going to play alongside Josh Phillips and uh, and uh, J.J. Greer, I believe. As we see here, J.J. Greer rising for this one. Great ball by Nate Robinson once again from a set piece. Wonderful leap there by J.J. Greer, just unable to keep that one down. 82nd minute. The switchbacks ticking down towards a first playoff win here in this franchise's inaugural season. You could not ask for more. The goals for this season, well, number one, make the playoffs. They have accomplished that and on the verge of setting the bar even higher. They are minutes away from an opening round playoff victory here against Seattle. Again, the winner moves on to take on Oklahoma City Sunday night, October the 4th in OKC. Seattle's really got to gamble, really got to give everything they have now, try to get a, try to get a, uh, just got to get themselves on the board, put the pressure on the switchbacks here for the final few minutes. Anderson, ball up to the right side. Oh, great move, hesitation, and, and then uh, not able to keep the ball for a moment, chipped in there by Garza on the back side, but boy, what a play by Damian Lowe, nifty footwork. It was, just went to the well one too many times there, was able to beat Shintaro Harada on the first one, I think it was, but uh, not on the second try there. They just got to start peppering Dave Legoric's uh, goal with shots here, Seattle Sounders FC2, but obviously a lot easier said than done with the defense here shown tonight by Colorado Springs. Now into the 84th minute. Nice touch, what a touch there by Correa. Off the left foot, Correa, he has been. He's been great tonight. Certainly one of the bright spots of Seattle. Haven't been many tonight for the Sounders, too. They'll work at far side and went defensively. Great play on the far side of the switchbacks. They'll win it back midfield. Hoffman not able to possess that ball. You can see the work ethic there of Chandler Hoffman. Just not much he can do when he's surrounded by three, four, five Seattle Sounders FC2 players. Getting a little bit isolated, Chandler Hoffman, but he's helping on his midfield as much as he can here in the second half. Well, it's amazing where this season started. The switchbacks in the home opener against Oklahoma City thought they had a result. We're going to have a tie match in Oklahoma City scored late. They had a couple of lapses early, but this is a switchbacks team that has grown and showing the ability to close it out here on the verge. Up two goals, still time left, but they are running out of it, is Seattle. Here's Jordan Burt working down the near side. Nice ball. Burt, ball in, hit it up, and a great save with the right hand by Rock Lyon. What a cross that was by Jordan Burt. Inch perfect cross, wonderfully floated right onto the top of the head of the captain, Luke Furcoloni. Powers that header as he's supposed to do down into the ground, but that's a fantastic save by Lyon. What a ball that is. Great save there at his far post there by number 22, Lyon. What a, a great goalkeeping there by Charlie Lyon. Wonderful save. Keeps this at a two goal match here, 85th minute. Seattle in urgency mode. Their season on the line here in the quarterfinal matchup against the switchbacks. The winner moves on to the semifinals next week in Oklahoma. Nike, a proud partner of the USL. Follow at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all the latest Nike soccer information. Aaron King coming in now. And a savvy veteran forward in. And boy, what a role Aaron King has played and played it so willingly. He is better the starting lineup throughout much of this season. A reserve role here in the quarterfinals. You can see Chandler Hoffman. Much respect between those two great players for the switchbacks. Indeed, Chandler Hoffman did everything he was asked to do tonight. Like I said before, he ran, ran down every ball. He harried the defense of the Seattle Sounders FC2. Aaron King will bring much of the same. A lot of experience for Aaron King. Brings a lot of size in case Seattle has some set pieces late in the game. But uh, Aaron King brings a, a wealth of experience and a wealth of class to this Colorado Springs switchbacks organization. He's a great guy. He's great off the field. And uh, on the field, he really leads by example as we see him chasing back here. It's really nice to have Aaron King to be able to come off the bench for head coach Steve Tritchie. It was a real Luxury. Talk about those core veterans assembled by Steve Trichu building this team of Vercoloni, a Shintaro Harada, and 
Eric and Eric King. King. Those are three yep. core veterans, and yep. you can see how the young guys have really come along under their leadership. They have. You can see the younger players at training. They follow what these guys do both on and off the field, the way they take care of themselves, the way they prepare their, their nutrition, the way they get ready for these games. Having those uh, old-timers, as it were, even though they're nowhere near old, having those more veteran players like Vercoloni, Aaron King, as you said, Shintaro Harada, even players like David Lagoric be able to come onto this roster. It's been fantastic for the switchbacks. Well, Seattle running out of time here. 87th minute, still needing two goals to even this one up. Backside, and Hold Kareem on. Smith with yep. that big body uses his size to deflect that ball. It's very well done there by Kareem Smith. He was in a difficult position. He was facing his own goal, but he was able to get just enough on that ball to push it out to the far side. Good move on the far side. And We'll stay with him defensively. Jordan Burke covers it up on the goal box. Still kept alive and rolls out. Last touch there by Seattle. Well defended there by Josh Phillips in the end. That was a bit of pinball. That was a bit scrappy there toward the end. But uh, luckily for the switchbacks, no shots on goal. See this one bouncing all over the place here. Josh Phillips just doesn't want to commit himself, doesn't want to give away the penalty kick, plays it off the uh, offensive player there. Goal kick for the switchbacks. So Gork takes it here in the 88th minute. What a night here for the switchbacks. A great first half. And championship caliber teams do showing the ability to close in the second half doing just that the two goal lead after 45 minutes and they better rock solid and a player down to the far side for Seattle training staff right on top of it player saying it was a bit of an elbow but doesn't look like it I think David Lagoric might have picked up a yellow card there for some time wasting um, while, while the uh, camera was off him but it uh, looks like David Lagoric picked up a yellow card here for time wasting but that uh, that shouldn't concern the switchbacks very much at this point in the game so Steve Trichu keeping an eye on the time 89th minute obviously stoppage time coming up at the end of this one but Seattle has got to go if they want any chance to try to Somehow, miraculously, come back in this, down two goals. Rossi working in the open field. And now Correa on the back end. Just missed, looking to connect with Garza. Switchbacks waiting that throw in here. They're going to do everything they can to try to take down this clock. JJ, oh, excuse me, uh, Jordan Burt's already been booked, so he can't take too many liberties here before he throws this one in. Mercadoni with the left foot, a little heavy on that touch, and opportunity here for Son Young and company. That's low up the right side. Into the 90th minute, a shot attempt there by Damian Lowe. You know, Seattle outshot the switchback 7-3 in the opening half. It did not feel like it. It was a half control by Colorado Springs. They've continued that. And Half number two, not as much offense, but they have been able to possess the ball. This is good help from the ball boy there tonight. See Aaron King here picking up right where Chandler Hoffman let off, just getting himself in that space, just making it difficult for the Seattle Sounders FC two defenders to pick an easy pass here. Goes unnoticed, won't, won't pop up in the newspaper the work that Chandler Hoffman and Aaron King uh, coming in to spell him have done tonight, but it's, uh, it's been really been leading from the front here by the switchbacks, and here's some hold up play from Aaron King. Off the right foot, David Agoric. A little more of a play than he wanted on that ball. And the stoppage time now. Four minutes of extra time in this quarterfinal playoff matchup. That is what is standing between the switchbacks and an appearance in the semifinals next Sunday night in Oklahoma City. Give them a lot of time to prepare, too, obviously, playing here on a Friday night, not playing till next Sunday. That'll give the uh, switchbacks a lot of time to stay here in Colorado Springs, get ready for that one. And obviously the switchbacks are hoping for a little cooler conditions headed up by Kareem Smith and that is exactly why Steve Trichu has him in the game here in the closing moments. Yes sir, well said. Just too far there for Aaron King from Davy Armstrong. And lie it out to play it for Oklahoma, or rather for Seattle. Got Oklahoma on our minds already. Still some work left to be done though for the switchbacks. A well played the game. Credit Seattle, they have played hard, but they've just not had it tonight. Have been off a tick or two, and boy, the switchbacks jumped on them early and have not let up. 
Bowles going to stay in here for Luke Furcoloni. Nice pass there to Aaron King. Aaron King will run that one down, but uh, well defended by uh, Seattle. Lyon. The crowd senses it. So two and a half minutes left in stoppage time. Low up the right side. Four to the 18 now. Now we're never for Seattle. And ball in and headed through. A good cross, but again, the switchbacks, they have not been out of position this entire night. One final substitution here for the switchbacks. Just take a little bit more time off the clock. Active duty Air Force, Kevin Durr, he's going to be coming in here. Uh, great to see Kevin, of course, pulling double duty. Indeed. Commitments. With the United States Air Force played his collegiate ball just west of here at the Air Force Academy, part of a team that made a remarkable run just a couple of seasons ago. And Kevin Durr into the contest here in stoppage time. Shin Harada out. As we put a bow on this one. Switchbacks looking to close it out with the shutout here and advance on to the semifinals. It's Josh Phillips setting that one away again there at the near post. Not much time. Not much time at all here for Seattle to uh, get an equalizer, let alone, uh, or excuse me, get a goal, let alone get an equalizer. So it looks like the switchbacks have uh, won this one here, and it's on to Oklahoma City for the Colorado Springs switchbacks next Sunday. Now the switchbacks weren't certain how this was going to play out after uh, being unable to host a or pick up a bye, I should say, and it's turned out just fine tonight. In line for the two to nothing victory here against Seattle. Ball to the quarter, headed right back out of there by Josh Phillips. Josh again. Phillips. He has been. Outstanding here tonight as he has all season long on the defensive side of the switchbacks. Battle at the top of the 18. Bodies on the ground and Greer clears with the left foot. Switchbacks doing everything they can to keep Seattle from getting a shot on David Lagoric. It's been a shutout so far. Clean sheet for David Lagoric, but a lot of that has to go to the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Desperately unlucky there for Josh Phillips to pick up the yellow card there. Steve Trichu furious on the sidelines there. Looked as though Josh Phillips won the ball from my angle. Uh, looks a bit unlucky to pick up that yellow card. The referee was right on top of the spot in fairness, but uh, that's a yellow card there for Josh Phillips, not making the Colorado Springs switchbacks bench very happy. So Pablo Rossi to take the free kick here. Here. So four minutes into stoppage time. And this may be it for a chance to erase the shutout for Seattle. This is it. We're in stoppage time, of stoppage time here. If they're going to get a goal, if they're going to get a consolation, it's going to come here. Rossi with the right foot. Not even close. Into the street. So Pablo Rossi. And that should do it. Unlucky there. Unlucky way for Pablo Rossi season here at the USL level to end. Blasting that one a good uh, 30, 40 yards over, over David Lagoric's net, but I think as soon as David Lagoric kicks this one, we're going to hear the final whistle. And we are. What a performance by the switchbacks. They open up the 2015 playoffs with a victory. A pair of goals in the first half, the difference. The switchbacks move on to the semifinals. They knock off Seattle, two to nothing. We'll be back right after this. Headed to the mountains? Watch Good Morning Vale now on CET Comcast Entertainment Television for everything you need to know before you hit the slopes. Good Morning Vale, your local resource for mountain weather, snow totals, and travel conditions. We'll be your guide from the first chairlift ride to the final run of the season. So don't miss the fun. Watch Good Morning Vale live every day at 7 a.m. on Comcast Entertainment Television. Good Morning Vale, be in the know before you go. It's another great month of live sports on CET, featuring the debut of Northern Colorado football and volleyball. Catch it all exclusively on Comcast Entertainment Television. Out West's new season starts September 29th. Here's a peek on what's to come, only on CET.
When it comes to college football, I'll do anything to be where the action is. Can we move down towards the 50 here, girls? That's why I have X1. With the sports app, I can track multiple teams and jump between close games, which is perfect for me because my jumping days are over. X1 will change the way you experience TV. Get Pac-12 networks when you switch to the Xfinity X1 Triple Play and save when you bundle. Call or go online today. Back here at Sand Creek Stadium, the switchbacks knock off the Seattle Sounders 2. 2 to nothing here in the quarterfinals. So the switchbacks advancing on to the semifinals next Sunday night, October the 4th in Oklahoma City. 4 o'clock Mountain Time start of that one. Josh Howe back here at the booth. And boy, what a performance for Colorado Springs. They wrapped up the regular season with the loss, but boy, they bounced back in big time fashion. Win when they had to, to keep their season alive, and they got it going. Miguel Gonzalez gets his 11th goal of the season, and it comes in the 14th minute of this match. The feed for the veteran Chandler Hoffman, and that set the tone for the switchbacks. Eight minutes later, they would add another on a set piece. It was Nate Robinson in the quarter, a Heineken quarter kick, a great ball in. J.J. Greer heads it in between the legs of the defender and in. Two to nothing to score, and that would hold David Agoric. He was sensational. Agoric coming up with this 10th shutout of the season. It all combines for a 2 nothing win, and the switchbacks moving on to the semifinals. Right now, let's send it down to the field. Roland Vargas standing by with one of our stars of the game. Roland. I'm here with J.J. Greer. J.J., congratulations on the victory. How much did that goal mean for you? Uh, it meant a lot. I mean, just to put us 2-0 up, um, I think it settled guys down a lot and, you know, really pumped me up, and, you know, we carried on from there. You've got a difficult road trip on the, on the way now down to Oklahoma. What are your thoughts going into that game? I know it's over a week away, but what are your first impressions? Um, they have a great, they have a great crowd down there. Uh, tough place to play, um, but we have a great team. You, you have a really great partnership with uh, J Josh at the back. How much does that partnership mean for you guys to be able to play off each other and really limit the team's uh, chances? It means a ton. I mean, you know, we've been building that uh, that chemistry all season. So, you know, I said before, you know, he does some stuff that I don't do. Maybe I do some stuff he doesn't do, and we feed off each other. And we go from there. JJ, congratulations. Well done on the win. And good luck in Oklahoma City. Thanks very much. Back to the booth. Back to you, Josh. All right. Thank you very much, Roland. And thank you very much, JJ, our man of the match in a wide on 22nd minute. Puts the icing on the cake, what it turned out to be the second goal of the match. And the uh, defense able to hold up to keep that shutout intact. Two to nothing. The final score, so you heard J.J. talk about the challenges ahead. Next week, the switchbacks will have a little time to savor this one. Watch to see how these other games shake out. But Oklahoma City, remember, they earned the number two seed of the Western Conference, so they get the bye. They're able to sit back and watch this one here tonight. Now they have to prepare for Colorado Springs, which will have a few extra days of rest here before the week of preparation. Let's take a look at some of the numbers in this one. Around the numbers, and the shots equal on that one. Nine shots apiece, shots on goal. One better for the switchbacks. The quarter kicks, the switchbacks getting a goal off a quarter kick in the 22nd minute. Uh, they had seven quarters, a physical game, but a well-played game. And time of possession, so important. The switchbacks had the edge at the half, and they extended that roll in here in the second half. They did almost 60%. Uh, a lot of fouls for the Colorado Springs switchbacks, but that helped them keep the ball in front of them. As we said, as I'm sure you already mentioned, limiting the pressure on Dave Legoric. It's an excellent performance tonight by the Colorado Springs switchbacks, offensively, defensively, of course, but their offense really led from the front. Pressuring, Chandler Hoffman started that. Aaron King continued that when he come, came off the bench, did a fantastic job here. As we see on the highlights, Miguel Gonzalez with the opening goal. Yeah, Miguel Gonzalez, the tone setter, his 11th goal of the season. He got this playoff started in grand fashion. It's a great goal by Miguel Gonzalez. What a pass it was, too, from Chandler Hoff and Luke Vercoloni also involved in that opener. Miguel Gonzalez jumping over the advertising hoardings. See here the crowd here at Fortress Sand Creek getting fired up for this one. Great crowd on hand here tonight. Whole Foods corner kicks. Nate Robinson really well done whipping that ball in. J.J. Greer, who I just spoke to, Man, a few words, one of the kindest guys on the team. Really sweet guy, J.J. Greer. That's a great goal. Said Robinson on the uh, line there. The referees talked about it, but obviously it counted 2-0 switchbacks. So all the energy, all the momentum in favor of the switchbacks. But they saw this play out before. They had a lead in Seattle. 
The Sounders, too, came back to win that one, but this time they kept the hammer down. They did. A little, little nasty play there between Miguel Gonzalez. Little, as you see here, Gonzalez getting pushed into the, uh, into the advertising hoardings. That was a little bit nasty against Miguel Gonzalez there. But uh, Dave Lagoric with a save. And then what about that from Miguel Gonzalez? Throwing his body on the line, keeping his arms down. That ball hitting his back, maybe hitting his, a little bit of his chest there. Fantastic goal-saving uh, tackle there by Miguel Gonzalez. Dave Lagoric on hand, not going to be beaten at his short post there. And Ziggy getting this crowd charged up. Why not? And uh, good punch out there on the part of Charlie Lyon. He was good tonight, but he boy, was. just too much pressure for too long. And uh, eventually he would crack, obviously, in the first half, but he played pretty well in the second. He did. I thought Lyon was good. I thought Andres Carrera was fantastic on the left side. If there's any player who definitely didn't deserve to lose and wearing Seattle colors tonight, it was Correa. He was brilliant getting up and down that left-hand side, whipping crosses in. Also really limited Jordan Burt going forward. Jordan Burt's a player we've seen come on more and more in the last couple of weeks, and he was really limited this, uh, this game getting forward, and that was all down to the play of Correa. So the switchbacks do it off tonight. They get the victory as Pablo Rossi, you can see, enters the game of the second half and a near make there. But the switchbacks, they're rolling on as David Gore gets his 10th set out of the season. So real quickly, we fast forward to Oklahoma City on the fourth. This is a team matched up well with the switchbacks, evenly matched in the opener, should have had a draw. Oklahoma City stole one here on the home over for the switchbacks, but late in the season, uh, the switchbacks coming from behind, getting the draw. Uh, you expect to see more here in round number three. You do, Ronnie Argetta should be fully fit for that one, we hope. Fingers crossed for the Colorado Springs switchbacks. Danny Koenig obviously leading the line for Oklahoma City, one of the most dangerous players in the USL, but it's the switchbacks who have the momentum. If I'm Oklahoma City, I'm watching this game right now. I'm a little bit worried by what I'm seeing, especially offensively by the Colorado Springs switchbacks FC. Look Looking very dangerous. Lots ahead for the switchbacks again October the 4th in Oklahoma City. That is going to wrap it up for our broadcast here tonight. Big thank you to our crew here. CET Sports, the Xfinity Sports Truck. For our entire crew, Roland Vargas, I'm Josh Howe saying good night from Sand Creek Stadium. The switchbacks are moving on.